चेक 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 साउंड चेक साउंड चेक वन टू थ्री स्टूडेंट्स गुड इवनिंग इच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू दिल बसवराज सर योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर वेलकम टू विदांत टू नीट इंग्लिश स्टूडेंट्स होपफुली एवरी वन इज डूइंग ग्रेट एंड स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अ सेशन वेयर विल बी डूइंग ऑलमोस्ट अराउंड टू हंड्रेड पी वाई क्यूज फ्रॉम योर एंटायर बॉटनी बट मैंने से एंटायर बॉटनी इन टूडे सेशन इन टूडे सेशन विल बी डूइंग फ्रॉम क्लास इलेवेंथ ना वाई सर वाई यू डूइंग ओनली क्लास इलेवेंथ एंड नॉट क्लास ट्वेल्थ द आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल tell me how much is your cranial capacity tell me all of you how much is your cranial capacity and how much is your concentration capacity you have already done three or four hours with gopika ma'am already so you have some amount of mental capacity for one day is little bit consumed right so i don't want to overburden all of you with so much information on one day that you will not remember anything so for that very reason in today's video we'll be doing the class 11th first right so we'll be doing all the chapters of your class 11th all the way from the living world all the way from the living world to the plant physiology that's right living world morphology of flowering plants anatomy of flowering plants cell like unit of life biomolecules and then then cell cycle and cell division then we'll be doing your plant plant growth regulators uh, plant physiology the entire thing right photosynthesis in higher plants respiration in plants every single chapter previous year question but students how i have told you that uh, when it comes to biology yes when it comes to biology ncrt is the key have you ever told you we we keep telling you right when it comes to biology ncrt is the main goal right i have always told you if you know biology if you need to know ncrt but have you ever wondered why tell me in the students have you ever wondered why why for biology ncrt is the key because all the questions 99% of questions in your neat examination is directly from your ncrt but do you need proof that's why right, students in today's video every single pyq every single pyq i will show you a ncrt snip with a proof that this question is from your ncrt that's right so i will be showing you proof that for your biology if you read your ncrt it's more than enough so with that being said can we start with the first question Yes can we start with the first question i want everyone to be on point everyone to be alert all you need to do is keep your phone laptop pc in front of you keep a water bottle next to you that's it you do not need a separate book you do not need to keep your ncrt also today because you need to make sure you answer answer these questions out of memory and out of practice not looking at ncrt okay so all you need to do is look at me listen to my voice try answering the questions and keep a water bottle next to you for rehydration okay so can we start the first question now show some energy in the chat students i know you have been doing zoology but everyone in your neat examination both are important if you just do zoology i will not get the entire marks so botany is equally important so let's start with the first question let's start with the first question now students tell me in the chat is the question visible to all of you tell me in the chat is the question visible to each and every one of you that is which of the following is against which of the following is against the rule of international code for botanical nomenclature yes what is it against handwritten scientific name should be underlined correct sir yes sir it is correct every species should have a generic name and a species epithet correct scientific name are in latin and should be italicized all of us know the names are in latin and they need to be italicized but they are asking you against the rules that is generic name and species name should be written in starting with small letters now tell me in the chat can both species name and species epithet should they start with small letter obviously no because we know the generic name should be capital here the first word denoting the genus starting with the capital letter while the species epithet starting with the small letter example mangifera indica can you see the m is capital here and the species is supposed to be small letter and this is your ncrt snip and you can expect you can expect at least one or two questions here okay you can expect questions from here next question students the next question is here which of the following belong to the family musidae which is the family tell me easy question directly from your ncrt that from ncrt i'll give you 10 seconds 10 9 
एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन टाइम्स अप इट इज योर हाउस फ्लाई Now students, this has been a question which has been asked repeatedly. Repeatedly, they have been asking this question. And where is the question from? This question is from this following table. If you look here, the house fly family. Now students, in the next examination, in your NEET 2024, they can ask you wheat. What is the scientific name of NEET wheat? Triticum estivum. Or they can ask you the family. It is poesy. Yes, it is poesy. So students, you should not tell me that sir, wheat is out of NCERT. Poesy is mentioned, so you should know wheat belongs to poesy or poils or monocotyledone. So students, this particular table is very important from your first chapter. Apart from this chart, this thing, the other important point is going to be your taxonomic category. Next important point is your taxonomic category. In the taxonomic category, which hierarchical arrangement is? Ascending, ascending order correct to the case of animals. Ascending order, yes, yes, it is ascending order. Everyone read it. It is ascending order. So kingdom, phylum, which is it? Ten seconds. Take ten seconds. Only ten seconds, and I'll show you exactly from where in CRT this question has come. Take ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, done. Exactly. Kingdom phylum. Now, why phylum is mentioned here? Why? Because it is case of animals. Case of animals. So your kingdom phylum class order family genus and species. And this is your NCERT SNP. See kingdom phylum for your animals. Division for your plants. Class order family genus and species very easy question yes sir very very easy question now next question students and students everyone if you are able to solve the questions if you are able to solve the questions quickly like the video right now right now quickly like the video and go ahead for the next question that is x and y are components of binomial nomenclature all of us know the meaning of binomial means two words are there one is x one is Why? This naming system was proposed by Z. Now, quickly tell me in the chat what is X, what is Y, and what is Z. Tell me in the chat quickly, all of you. What is X? What is Y? And what is Z? Yes. Take some time, all of you. Take your time and answer, sweetie. Yes. X is going to be your. X is going. X is going to be your generic name, yes, and Y is going to be your species epithet, and that was given by your none other than Carlinius. Now, where in NCERT exactly can you see here? Generic name and species epithet. So first letter X is going to be generic name, then it is going to be species epithet. Easy? Such an easy question. Do you really realize? Such easy questions have come from first chapter. First chapter, little bit easy. The same question again. House fly belongs to which family? All of us know it is Musidae, right? Easy question. Four option number four. Do you see students from that particular table? All of you know a table, right? From that particular table, you can expect multiple questions. Similarly, you can expect questions from your taxonomic category as well as taxonomic category as well as your order. Done. Apart from that, in this chapter, questions will not come from anywhere. That's it. Okay. Now students. Can we start the next chapter now? Can we start the next chapter? This is question from your plant kingdom now. See, students, ma'am used uh, ma'am uh, Gopika ma'am conducted your biological classification. So we'll be starting with your plant kingdom now. Quickly, green ask in the chat if you love plant kingdom. Everyone, from a evolutionary point of view, retention, retention of female gametophyte. That is, the female gametophyte is retained. Inside the sporangia, that is a clue. With developing young embryo on the parent sporophyte for some time, it is first observed in. That is, the seed habitat was first observed in. When did you observe seed habitat? The first time. Students, if you remember, when I was teaching you heterospory, 
yes in your pteridophytes in the case of homospory sporophyte and gametophyte both are independent in homospory i repeat again in homospory both gametophyte and sporophyte both are independent but when it comes to heterospory in pteridophytes heterospory in case of pteridophytes the female gametophyte is retained inside the sporangia the female gametophyte is retained inside the sporangia that is the precursor of seed habitat right it is your pteridophytes can you see this line here students all of you can you see her the female gametophyte in these plants that is in the case of your pteridophytes are retained on the parent sporophyte for variable period of time the development of zygote into young embryos takes place within the female gametophyte this event is a precursor of your seed habitat now quickly tell me in the chat even though there is seed habitat do pteridophytes produce seeds tell me in the chat do they produce seeds by any chance pteridophytes the answer would be no sir the reason there is no seeds in pteridophytes is because the particular sporangia or the gametophyte did not have a integuments if there was integuments there was there would be seed coat if there are no integuments no seed coat that is why until gymnosperms there are no seeds until gymnosperms there are no seeds next question students next question students all of you should know why why am i telling you a particular answer what is the science behind it okay clear now quickly like the video if you knew that um, information was new now pinus seeds cannot germinate and establish without fungal association that is a pinus a tree which is a gymnosperm yes pinus a tree which is a gymnosperm cannot grow or germinate without the fungal association why take your 10 seconds take your 10 seconds all of you 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 times up all of you that is it has an obligate association with the mycorrhizae mycorrhizal association with the help of mycorrhizal association it helps us to derive the nutrition clear now you can ask you one more question here what about the mycor what about the symbiotic relationship in the case of your cycus what is it called as tell me in the chat what is the symbiotic relationship in the case of cycus what do you call that can anyone tell me in the chat it's here if you notice your ncrd lines see in the case of pinus it is mycorrhizal association all of you know that but in the case of cycus but in the case of cycus it is your nitrogen fixation that is called as your colloid roots so in the case c for cycus c for colloid roots so in the case of your cycus there is a symbiotic relationship between anabina and nostoc which are nitrogen fixing bacteria clear so will you be able to answer these questions will you be able to answer such questions if they ask you in a multiple different manner or they can ask you which is branched is cycus branched or is it pinus is branched right so all such questions can ask in when it comes to gymnosperms clear next question students how is the pace students do you realize you actually solved your entire living world done half of plant kingdom is done see this is what i want from my students everyone should be on point with energy with solving questions like a quick like a flash i was going to say flash but okay which of the following statements is incorrect about gymnosperms there is a incorrect statement here there is one imposter here there is a imposter here identify the imposter they are heterosporous male and female gametophyte are reliving most of them have narrow leaves with thick cuticle seeds are not covered take your time take your time you are asking me to increase more pace if i increase more pace you will not understand anything exactly tell me students see we know they are heterosporous we know the seeds are not covered that is that's why they are called as naked seeds right most of them have narrow leaves with thick cuticle that is in the case of pinus you might have seen narrow leaves 
thick cuticle is the adaptation. Now, male and female gametophyte are pre-living. Didn't we just learn? That is, in the case of your gymnosperms, the female gametophyte and the female gametophyte is not independent. That is, the female gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte. So, your option number B is imposter here. That is, male and female gametes are pre-living is wrong. That is, female gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte. Now, students, how will you understand this? Namaskar, LR go. Volume is, students, is the volume not good? Students, is the volume clear? Check, 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 check. Now, next question. Now, algae question, very important. Floridian starch has structurally similar to. The Floridian starch, tell me first thing. Where do you find Floridian starch? Is it chlorophyceae? Is it rhodophyceae? Or is it pheophyceae? Tell me that first. Tell me that first. Where do you find? Where do you find the Floridian starch? First question. Then you answer this question later on. First tell me where do you find Floridian starch? Yes. I, volume is maximum I believe. This is the maximum volume. Yes. Floridian starch is mainly found in your red algae also called as your rhodophyceae. True. Now students. Floridian starch is structurally similar to two particular items here on the board. That is your amylopectin and glycogen. Amylopectin and glycogen. Now, didn't I tell you this when I was teaching you plant kingdom? Didn't I mention this? Yes, sir, I mentioned this. So, students, if you look at your NCRD line, if you look at your NCRD line, under your rhodophyceae, also called as your red algae, the food is stored as Floridian starch which is very similar to amylopectin and glycogen in the structure. Amylopectin and glycogen in structure. Now, all of you know chemistry. All of you know chemistry. Can I ask you a chemistry question here? What is the structure of amylopectin? Is it alpha 1,4 or is it alpha 1,6? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat quickly. When it comes to amylopectin, is it alpha 1,4 or is it alpha 1,6? Tell me in the chat. Chemistry also you should know. <laughs> biomolecules. Next question. Next question is here. Strobili or cone. All of us know strobili or cone. What is a strobili? Listen to me. I'll tell you. Even if you don't know, I'll tell you what is a strobili. Strobili is basically, strobili is basically a complete covering or complete collection of sporophyll. When many sporophylls come together, we get a cone or strobili. Now, what is a sporophyll? Sporophyll is a fertile leaf. What is a fertile leaf? Fertile leaf is a leaf. Leaf plus sporangia. That is a fertile leaf. Now, strobilites or cone are found in your equilibrium like speed of light. Now, students, they can ask you a diagram based question. Can you see this? They can give you a diagram. They can give you a diagram, all of you. They can give you a diagram like this. See, strobilus here. Strobilus is here. That is the example of your equisitum. That is the example of equisitum. Clear? See here, in some cases, sporophylls may form distinctive compact structure called as strobili. When the multiple sporophylls join together, they form cone or strobili. Example is your selaginella and equisitum. Now students, have they given you selaginella anywhere here? Have they given you selaginella? No. So only answer is going to be your equisitum. Are you able to follow? Are you able to follow? Yes. This is how you should be learning your entire plant kingdom. Every single line of NCRT can be asked as a question. So I am here to teach you, make you understand, question can come from any line of NCRT. So be prepared. Okay, so be prepared. Clear? Next question. Is there a lag? Check, check, check. Is there a lag? Can I see a lag? I don't see any lag here. Strucking. Strucking is not a word. <laughs> Struck. Strucking. <laughs> that made my day now. <laughs> nice. Okay, next question. All of you serious mode on next question. Strucking, it seems. <laughs> okay. 
विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पेयर इज अलर आल गे इजी क्वेश्चन टेन सेकेंड्स इजी क्वेश्चन टेन सेकेंड्स टेन नाइन एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन गो द आंसर इज योर क्लोरेला एंड योर स्पिरुलिना क्लोरेला एंड स्पिरुलिना बोथ ऑफ यू बोथ ऑफ दम आर यूनिसलर आल गे नो अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस कैन एनी वन द चैट टेल मी वन मोर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ यूनिसलर आल गे Tell me in the chat. One more example. I'm sorry. This is the maximum I can increase the volume. I guess I can't increase the volume. I'm sorry. Students, is the volume that issue? Puchi ta can anyone tell me? Is the volume that issue? Check, check, check. Now tell me one more example of one more example of your uh, unicellular algae. One more example. Tell no someone. Chlamydia monas. Exactly, sweetie. Chlamydomonas. Now, will you tell me in the chat another example of your colonial algae? Tell me in the chat colonial algae. Genera like Salaginella and Salvinia. Salvinia sounds like your car name, no? Salaginella and Salvinia produces two kinds of spores. Such plants are known as a plant which is able to produce two types of spores. A plant which is able to produce two types of spores that is called as heterosporous. हेटिरो, होमोस्पोरस, हेटरोस्पोरस, हेटिरोसोरस और होमोसोरस। कल मिल चाट। Exactly, all of you are smart, no? Actually, me, actually me smart students. Wall box, exactly. It is your हेटिरोस्पोरस, not हेटिरोसोरस. हेटरोसोरस sounds like a dinosaur name. Okay, so answer should be your हेटिरोस्पोरस. N C R D line. Here it is. Students, can you see here? Salaginella and Salvinia, which produce your two kinds of spores called as heterosporous condition. Heterosporous condition. Next question, all of you. I want everyone. Are be a quick. I want answers. See, students. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing right now. Listen to me very carefully. When you are in a class, when you are in an offline class, when a teacher is asking question, sometimes what happens from inside? A voice comes in. That is, what if the answer is wrong? Does it come inside? It used to happen to me. It used to happen to me when I was in my class, eleventh, twelfth, even in my undergrad. I used to be scared to answer sometimes because what if my answer is wrong? What if my friends will judge me? That was my intention. But students, this is online. No one is going to judge you here, right? So I want everyone, everyone to answer. B doesn't matter if it's wrong answer. Doesn't matter if it's wrong answer. I want you to make a mistake. Make the mistake right now so that you don't make a mistake in your NEET examination. So every student who's watching right now, every single student, I want everyone to answer. Doesn't matter if you know, you do not know. Attempting right now. So will you promise me attempt? Doesn't matter if it's right. Doesn't matter if it's wrong. No one's going to judge you right now. So keep attempting. Attempting. Okay. Next question. Jam me a present in some gymnosperms, some liverworts, some mosses, or pterodophytes. Right. So this is the maximum I can increase. So please answer. The answer is going to be your some liver words. Quickly tell me the example. Quickly tell me the example, everyone. What is the example for your liver words, students? In your NCERT, there is only one example for your liver words. That is Marchantia, right? For your mosses, for your mosses, there are two examples: Funaria and Sphagnum. Nothing to worry, right? Only one example. That is your Marchantia. Sir, jammi, which is present, jammi cup. In some liverworts, that is your mark and she is the example. Clear. Now, what is jammi? I can ask you a question. What is jammi? Now, what is jammi? That is jammi are green multicellular asexual bud. Very important definition of a jammi. What is the definition of jammi? It is a green multicellular asexual bud. Very important. Clear. Next question, all of you, students, is the voice clear? I believe the voice should be clear by now because I'm speaking very loudly. People are coming from out of the studio; they're coming and checking me if if something's wrong with me. Okay, so I'm teaching with a good volume. I believe so. Which of the following algae produce carrageen? Everyone, every single one should answer this question. Doesn't matter; it's right. Doesn't matter; it's wrong. Attempt is the only goal here. Attempting. I want every one of my student, everyone who is aspirant here. Who needs to achieve that extra goal? Start attempting. If you're serious, start attempting. 
If you're not serious, you can like the video and go out. If you're in the session, attempt the session. Okay. Karaj gene is found in your which algae? Red algae, blue algae, green algae, yellow algae, green algae, red algae. Which is it? It is your red algae. Exactly. Now, quickly tell me in the chat, what is Karaj gene? What is this Karaj gene, students? Students, remember, Karaj gene is a type of your hydrocolloidal substance. Now, what is this hydrocolloidal substance? Hydrocolloidal substance is a substance which helps in holding water. Yes? Clear? Karajin is a substance which helps in holding the water. Done. Now, quickly tell me in the chat, which is the other example of hydrocolloidal substance which is given in your NCRT? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat quickly, which is the other example of hydrocolloidal substance which is given in your NCRT? Other example. It's given here. See, brown algae, algene. The other example is algene brown, present in your brown algae, which is or which is a hydrocolloid, water holding substances. Water holding substance, not carrying, water holding substances. Clear? That is your algene. Algene is found in your brown algae. Algene is found in your brown algae. Clear? Students, I want everyone to be serious. I know fun and games are good. But being serious also is good at some times. And this is the time where you need to be serious. Or <laughs> let's go game over. Now, which of the following algae contains mannitol as the reserved food material? Now, tell me in the chat. Mannitol can be found in your... See, forget the examples. Forget the examples. Tell me, where do you find mannitol and laminarin? Mannitol and laminarin can be found in your red algae, green algae, or brown algae. Tell me that first. Tell me that first. Forget the examples. Forget the examples. Tell me in the chat, where do you find your, where do you find your lamitol, mannitol and laminarin? Brown algae, red algae, or green algae? Tell me quickly in the chat. Exactly, it is found in your brown algae. Now, tell me in the chat, which is the example of brown algae here? All of us know, Volvox, green algae. Eulothrix, green algae. Gracilaria, red algae. The only example here, the only example of your brown algae is ectocarpus. It is ectocarpus. Now, what if I change this ectocarpus to fucus? What if I change this ectocarpus into fucus? Will the answer remain the same? Tell me in the chat. Will the answer remain the same? The answer should be yes, sir, because the other example for your brown algae are ectocarpus, dictyota, laminaria, sargassum, and fucus, as well as fucus. Now, students, that's why examples are very important. So, if you really want to score marks, examples is the key. So, you should remember all the examples of your red algae, all the examples of your green algae, all the examples of your brown algae. Examples will fetch you marks in biology. Okay, clear? So, fucus is also an example of your brown algae. Will you remember this, students? Will you remember this? That is, ectocarpus, dictyota, laminaria, sargassum, as well as fucus are the examples of your brown algae. Clear? Done. Students, every one of you like the video right now because I have a competition with Gopika ma'am. I have a competition with Gopika ma'am who will get more likes. So I want every one of you to like the video. Okay. For make the botany win. Now, this is a very, 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 very good question. Very good question. Very good question. This question will not be, will not be coming in your examination. This question will not come in your examination. But let me see, see, let me show you the question. This is a neat PYQ. This is a neat PYQ which has been asked last year itself. Last or last year, last or last, last, or 2019. I don't remember the date. Question, see the question now. Read the following statements and identify the characters related to the algae shown in the diagram. Now, they have shown you a diagram here of an algae. Now, can anyone in the chat tell me which is this algae? Can anyone in the chat tell me which is the algae here? Now students, this algae is not from your class 11th. This algae 
is a green algae it is a chlorophycian member it is a chlorophycian member but it is not from your class 11th it is algae is called as chiara this algae is called as chiara which is which was present when i say was this algae is deleted now that is this algae was part of your how do organisms reproduce chiara example they'll not ask you this one now so don't worry they'll not ask you but answer this question let's let's see the answer See, I told you it is a chlorophycian algae. A is correct. Food is stored in the form of starch. Correct. It is monoecious plant showing oogamine antheridium. Correct. Food stored in the form of flan. No. It shows dominance of pigments chlorophyllic. No. What is the answer? A, B, C. No. Yes. A, B, C. Clear? Clear. They will not ask you this question. This question. Can you see the same diagram? Same diagram. Now, when this question came in the examination, Everyone were like, sir, plant kingdom, this algae, where? Plant kingdom, this algae is not there. Students, they can mix, they can mix your class 11, class 12th and give you a question. Okay, so be prepared. Beautiful question, five star question. Now, let's see the next question. Let's see the next question, plant kingdom. Before biology, yes, 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 yes. Next question. Chlamydomonas is your algae. A is 3, A is 3. So this is gone. Cycles is your gymnosperm. B is 4. This is the answer. Done. See, I didn't even have to see the rest of them. I knew the answer by looking at this first two options. Right? Cycles. Selaginella is your Selaginella uh, is going to be your tetophyte. Sphagnum is your moss. Sphagnum is your moss. Algae. Gymnosperm. Tetophyte. Easy. That is called as elimination method. That is called as an elimination method where you eliminate based on the options. Next question, all of you. Next question. We are on the roll. No taking a break. No break until we finish. Well, I'll give you a break before plant physiology, but no break till then. Which of the following structure is haploid in its ploidy level? Now, again, this question is a mix match of your class 12th sexual reproduction in flowering plants and plant kingdom. This is the baby of your class 11th and 12th portion. Let's look at the baby. <clears throat> Primary endosperm nucleus triploid. Microsperm cell, no. Proteinema of cells of moss. <laughs> Primary endosperm nucleus in the dicot. Take 10 seconds. No. Take 10 seconds. Students, if you have attended my uh, lecture on plant kingdom, you should be able to solve this question. Like a easy, easy question. Easy question. Primary endosperm nucleus in your dicot is the answer. No. The answer is your protonema cell in the case of your moss. Protonema cell. If you remember, if you remember the cycle, do you remember cycle? In this cycle of your life cycle in the moss, did we discuss about your protonema stage? Protonema stage is said to be haploid. Can you see here? Spore. A diet level from the spore. Protonema stage is haploid. Developing from the spores, spores are from your capsule. From the capsule, meiosis is happening. Spores, protonema, haploid. This protonema develops your lateral buds, which develops into your gametophyte. Develops into your gametophyte. So, answer is what? The answer is option number three. Protonemal cells of the moss. Protonemal cells. Clear? Who went wrong? Tell me. Tell me how many of you went wrong. How many of you went wrong? Some of you might have gone wrong. Important questions. Okay. Let's go to the next question. The next question is here, students. That is, Cedrus, Adiantum, Sphagnum, Marcantia. So, if you think you might get confused somewhere, I've told you, Marcantia is the only example of liverworth. Yes. Marcantia is going to be your liverworth. D is 3. Where do you see D3? Only one option. Yes. D is 3. Only one option. Can you see here? Mark and sure. Liver worth. Done. If you want to, uh, if you want to solve everything else, see here. Cedrus is your gymnosperm. Adiantum is going to be your pteridophyte. Then we have sphagnum, which is going to be your moss. Remember, in the case of your mosses, there are two examples. Mosses, two examples. One is sphagnum, other one is your sphagnum and 
Funeria. Sphagnum and Funeria. Easy question. Students, if you know what, always match the following. Always for match the following, always go for your the topic which you know the best. Like here, which you know the best, go for that. Later on, you can later on you can go for something else. Okay? Clear? Prince, chill. <laughs> Next question, all of you. Uh, very good question. Very, very good question. I will move out of the way. I want everyone to attempt this question. I'll move out of the way. Let me read the question for you. Spirogyra, they have given you a list of two things. Spirogyra, dominant diploid sporophyte vascular plant with highly reduced male and female gametophyte. Fern, diploid free living gametophyte. Funeria, the dominant diploid sporophyte alternating with reduced gametophyte called as prothallus. Cycus, dominant haploid leafy uh, gametophyte alternating with partially dependent multicellular sporophyte. Now you will be like, sir. Such a difficult question. No, it's not. It's a very, very easy question. Very easy question. Just go for what you know first. Just go for what you know first. Take your time. All of you take your time and then go. All of you take your time. Always go for first which you know. See, all of us know. Right? All of us know. Where do you find the prothalus? Tell me. Zoom, 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 okay, zoom. Mm -hmm. can, you see, can you see better now? Always go for one which you know first. Always go for which one you know. Can't see the zoom. Huh? See here. Now tell me, where do you find the prothallus? Tell me first of all, where do you find prothallus? Prothallus is a structure which is found in your ferns, right? Uh, what is happening? Prothallus is a structure which is found in your ferns. Let's go one by one. Tell me, ferns, you see the prothallus. All of us know, diploid sporophyte, all tree with reduced gametophyte called as Prothallus. See, if you know the one life cycle of ferns, you know prothallus formation is there. In your homospory, prothallus was there. So, B is going to be 2. Can you see B is 2 where? Oh, it's going to be 3 here. This is 3. 3. Hmm. B is going to be your 3. So, B is 3 where? See, B is 3. Now, A is going to be 2, that is Spirogyra, dominant haploid freeling gametophyte. So, all of us know, all of us know in the case of your, in the case of your algae, gametophyte is completely independent, right? Gametophyte, see main plant body is only gametophyte there. In the case of your algae, the main plant body is gametophyte. Even in the case of your bryophytes, the main plant body is gametophyte, right? So, Spirogyra, which is an algae, dominant haploid free living. So, dominant haploid free living gametophyte. Done. Now, Funeria. Funeria is going to be your moss. Funeria is a moss. Dap, uh, dominant haploid leafy gametophyte. Again, same thing, right? Leafy gametophyte. Gametophyte is again dependent here. Gametophyte is again dependent. All treating with partially developed multicellular sporophyte. So remember when you did the life cycle of your uh, life cycle, when we did the life cycle of your uh, bryophytes, I told you in the case of your funeria, we have a multicellular line of NCRT, multicellular sporophyte. Clear? Multicellular sporophyte. Now, that's last one is cycus. Again, cycus is very easy. Dominant diploid sporophyte, vascular plant. So whenever it could be vascular plant, when it is vascular plant. It can either be fern or cycus, right? Now here, with highly reduced male and female gametophyte. But in the case of ferns, in the case of ferns, we know it is not highly reduced. Only in the case of your cycus, which is a gymnosperm, male and female gametophyte are highly reduced and they are dependent on the sporophyte. Clear? Understanding? 
I don't understand insulin. This is how you solve such questions. You need to understand what is important in one. Is this question clear to all of you? If this is clear, let's go to the next question. Which of the following is incorrectly matched? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat quickly. Which is incorrectly matched? And all of you drink some water. All of you drink some water. Yes, Sebastian, sweetie. Everyone drink some water. Now, everyone drink some water and let's go to the next question with high Josh and the same energy. Which of the following is incorrectly matched? Mm, let's see here. Simple, very, very simple. Very simple. All of you are going for two. Are you, why are you going for two? Look, look at Eulothrix. Tell me, Eulothrix is the red algae, brown algae or green algae? Tell me in the chat, hello Sri Laka. Tell me in the chat, not three, don't go, don't go for two. Tell me in the chat, Eulothrix are simple. Eulothrix, it is a green algae. Green algae, stored food material, is it mannitol? Tell me in the chat, is it mannitol? No. All of us know in the case of Eulothrix, which is a green algae, the food stored material in the case of your green algae is going to be starch and oil droplets. Yes. So, this is your answer. Incorrectly matched. Incorrectly matched. Clear? Clear to all of you. Do not make the same mistake in your examination. Do not make the same mistake. Make the mistakes right now. No regret later on. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh ho, oh, nice easy question again. Hydrocolloid. Students, all of these questions are your need PYQs. Don't be like, sir, how can questions be so easy? Don't be like that. Questions are easy because you have solved them. You have worked. Right? You have worked a lot. That's why the questions are easy. Okay. Hydrocolloid carrageen is obtained from easy questions. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. That is your road of IC only. Remember, only in the case of your road of ICA, which is your red algae, you will find carrageen. Algene in the case of your brown algae. Algene in the case of your brown algae. Car clear? That point should be clear to everyone. Easy question. So if you're able to solve that question, like the video right now, everyone. Like the video right now. Let's go to the next question. Next question is here from a need 2023. Last question. Some of you are droppers who are, might have attempted this question. Okay. That is, which class of algae possesses pigment Fucoxanthin and pigment phycoerythrin respectively. Where do you find? Where do you find Fucoxanthin and where do you find phycoerythrin? First one is your Fucoxanthin. Tell me in the chat. Where do you find? Where do you find Fucoxanthin? All of us know Fucoxanthin is found in your brown algae. Depending upon the concentration of your anthocyanin, which is about Fucoxanthin, it can range from your olive green to dark brown color. So, answer for the first one is going to be your brown algae, also called as your Pheophyce. Phycoerythrin, red algae, road of IC. What is the answer? Answer number is going to be your second. Why is going up? <laughs> that is Pheophyce for your brown algae, uh, for your Fucosanthin and road of IC for your road of IC for your road of IC for Phycoerythrin. Clear? Easy question? Easy question? Yes, you will be getting the PDF of this. Students, trust me. Do you think how many hours yesterday I sat? You know, yesterday night. Yesterday night till 2 o'clock, this PPT I was doing. Yesterday night, today morning, I woke up at 6. Again, this PPT was I was still making. You know why it takes so much of time? This finding this questions and answer is still easy. Do you know this NCRT snip? When you have to take every single line, I have to go find NCRT line find that particular snip, particular line of NCRT where the answer is from, that takes time, right? That takes a lot of time. See here, Pheophyce is your Fucoxanthin, Rhodophyce is your Phycoerythrin. Next question. Next question, all of you. Next question, all of you. In gymnosperms, the pollen grains are released from the microsporangium and carried by air current. Assertion. Assertion is here. Okay. Now, what is the reason here? 
break now only uh, no break until uh, 7 air current carry the pollen grains to the mouth of the archegonia where the male gametes are discharged and pollen tube is not formed tell me in the chat in the case of your gymnosperms let me tell you right now there is pollen tube development let me tell you right now in the case of your gymnosperm there is development of pollen tube what is the answer now tell me what is the answer now tell me what is the answer now change your answers quickly Vaishnavi Ravindrani change your answers now quickly everyone what is your answer A is true R is false A is true R is false clear in the case of your gymnosperm in the case of your gymnosperm there is development of pollen tube because we have pollen grains remember in the case of your gymnosperms there are pollen grains there will be pollen tube what does it say air current carry pollen grains to the mouth it is not can you see here not formed it is it is telling you pollen grains are not formed but just now i told you pollen grains are formed pollen grains are formed so your assertion is true reason is going to be false now will you make the same mistake in your examination will you make the same mistake in your neat examination if they ask you a question based on this concept the answer should be no because you made the mistake right now later on you will not make the same mistake okay later on you will not make the same mistake now next question okay given below are two statements one is labeled assertion obviously AR question the first stage in the gametophyte in the life cycle of moss is Protonema stage. Yes. All of us know the first stage. The first stage in the case of your pro in the cycle of your life cycle of your mosses, we have a protonema stage which is haploid in nature, which develops into the gametophyte. All of us know that. The protonema develops directly from the spores produced in the capsule. Produced in the capsule. Right? Where is it? I think I missed it somewhere. Anyway, uh, you remember, right? Oh, under is given. So both A R are correct, and R is the correct explanation of A. R is the correct explanation of A. Easy question. All of you, if you go go wrong on this, one chapel will come. Easy question. <laughs> Next question. Oh, now, is it too bright? Is it visible? Decrease your brightness, or should I decrease my brightness here? Is it visible? Is it visible or not? Visible. Now we are starting with your morphology. Now we are starting with morphology. Oops. I think I made something error. One thing, students. Is it visible? Visible, right? It's visible? Yes. Now tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat quickly the answers. First one is your basal placentation. What is the trick for basal placentation? What is the trick for basal placentation? Listen to the tricks. I have told the tricks in your main uh, in the shots. Basal placentation is birds migrate south. Birds migrate south. B for basal, M for mustard. M4, so M4 marigold, S for your sunflower. So mustard and sunflower are exam. Yeah, mustard and sunflower are your so marigold. So marigold and sunflower are your uh, thing. Marigold and sunflower are example. It's given here. So your basal presentation is going to be your spore here, right? Hmm. Birds migrate south. Wait, the trick was marigold and sunflower. No, 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 no. Let me. Uh, I don't remember the trick here. Let's see the trick later on. Okay. Next question. Which of the following shows world phyllotaxy? What is happening? Which of the following shows world phyllotaxy? That is, in one particular stem, we can see so many different leaves. So many leaves. Yes. World phyllotaxy can be seen where? 
al estonia see students every single example is important here can you see here for your world follow taxi al estonia is the example remember that then we have here for your alternate type of follow taxi example is your china rose mustard and sunflower yes for your alternate follow taxi china rose mustard and sunflower then we also have your opposite follow taxi we have calotropis and guava so remember for your alternate follow taxi alternate follow taxi we have china rose mustard and sunflower plants for opposite we have calotropis and guava and for your world we have alastonia clear next question identify the correct feature of mango and coconut correct feature of mango and coconut this is a question from your neat 2020 a question from your neat 2020 on your screen right now in both the fruit is droop correct endocarp is edible in both tell me in the chat can we eat the endocarp in your coconut and mango tell me in the chat all of us eat uh, all of us have eaten mango right first is the outer layer which we peel middle layer is the mesocarp which we eat the inside seed can we eat the seed as such no the seed is your endocarp is stony the endocarp is stony and you cannot eat it so this is wrong mesocarp in coconut is fibrous which we derive and mango it is fleshy i just told you correct in both the fruit develops from your monocarpillary superior ovary correct this is also correct so one three four here one three four one three four clear so if you look at your ncrd lines say here see mango and coconut fruit are called as droop both are called as droop both the cases in the case of droop the endocarp is stony the endocarp is stony and you cannot eat it you cannot eat it okay then it is developed from your monocarpillary superior ovary that is droop then we have mesocarp is fibrous in the case of your coconut mesocarp is fleshy in the case of mango easy question easy answer easy question easy answer next question all of you quickly like the video and we'll go to the next question i think the josh is going down in the chat i think the josh is going down in the chat all of you are exhausted already just after one hour all of you are giving up students do not we have completed two chapters done living world plant kingdom done from the last one hour did we solve we solved around 50 questions uh, around 30 questions we solved from past one hour you realize that so students this is the time where you have to be very serious so increase the josh be ready to answer the questions the correct position of flower over thalamus in mustard planters in mustard plant in your mustard plant what do you notice it is your superior ovary or is it inferior ovary or is it half inferior tell me in the chat in the case of your in the case of your in the case of your mustard in the case of your mustard what do you notice so in the case of your mustard we notice a hypogynous ovary superior ovary that is gynecium occupies the highest position while other parts are situated below it so this is your superior ovary is the answer superior ovary is the answer now students they can ask you question from your epigynous they can ask you question from your hypogynous or perigynous now if i remember a trick for this do you want a trick for this do you want a trick for this yes very easy trick the trick here is hero from china a hero from china must have brinjal a hero from china must have brinjal that is hero that is hero is hero is your hypogynous must m a must for mustard from china is china rose must have brinjal that is must have brinjal a hero from china must have brinjal i made it long back if i remember it i think that's what i remember a hero from china must have brinjal okay that is for your hypogynous what about perigynous perigynous is very simple trick 
that is people pluck pink roses people pluck pink roses p in the people stands for perigynous p in the pl pl pluck stands for plum roses stands for rose and people pluck people pluck pink the p stands for peaches so people pluck pink roses p p p p p r p p r people pluck pink roses the last one i remember <laughs> so uh, when i was studying i remember inferior ovary how i remember i'll tell you inferior is basically means something you don't like okay back in the days i used to hate drinking cu uh, cucumber juice i'm like cucumber cu cucumber juice i can't drink so i remember inferior ovary means i don't like it and it is cucumber juice and also guava juice and also sunflower juice ray florets of your sunflower ray florets of your sunflower i didn't have a trick for this but i remember it like that cucumber juice i don't like so it's inferior along with that guava juice also i don't like i also don't like your sunflower juice there is no sunflower juice but still that's how i remember it ray florets of your sunflower ray florets of your sunflower clear next question next question all of you ovary is half inferior in we just learned we just learned this ovary is half inferior see here half inferior where do you see perigynous the ovary here is half inferior in plum roses and peaches we have, we have something here exactly so half inferior done easy question easy answer friends you can use your own tricks you can use your own tricks see tricks are only best when you have your own tricks honestly when i used to sit and study i used to make my own notes that's the best thing so now very good question very good question all of you listen to me very carefully now listen to me very carefully very very good question very top level question now the roots that originate from the base of the stem from the base of the stem some roots are rising what do we call them do we call them primary roots prop roots lateral roots or fibrous roots or we call them fibrous roots very good question exact line of your ncrt exact line of your ncrt everyone have you shared the video tell me honestly every telegram you know any telegram any any place you know start sharing the video because students trust me we are not only doing the chapters in a pyq format i'm also showing you the ncrt snips that is more important yes now some are saying primary roots the answer is wrong prop roots is answer is wrong lateral roots answer is wrong answer is your fibrous root answer is your fibrous root now tell me in the chat one question true or false question all of you tell me true or false now all of you tell me true or false ready ready fibrous root is a type of adventitious root easy question fibrous root here is it a type of adventitious root true or false in the chat quickly see here roots that originate from the base of the stem constitute the fibrous root constitute the fibrous root so fibrous root are the roots which originate from the base of the stem now see here listen to me very carefully roots arising from part of the plant other than the radical if a root is developing if a root is developing a part other than the radical it is called as your adventitious root so what is the definition the definition of your adventitious root definition of your adventitious root is that a root which is arising other than the radical now you tell me is the fibrous root is the fibrous root developing from the radical no so technically students technically fibrous root is a type of fibrous root is a type of your adventitious root fibrous root is a type of adventitious root remember that throughout your life now throughout your life remember definition of your adventitious root is root arising other than the radical fibrous root is ar arising from the base of the stem not from the radical so technically fibrous root is a type of adventitious root clear like the video right now if you think that information is new to you like that video right now if that information is new to you next question all of you next question nice so that's how you learn botany that's how you learn understand botany every single question here and there they'll ask you grab you okay next question 
Ray Florets have. We just learned. I told you, no. Ray Florets juice. No, I don't like. Cucumber juice, I don't like. Guava juice, I don't like. Why? Because it is inferior. Inferior ovary. Done. Inferior ovary. Done. What is for your hypogynous? Hypogynous is a hero from China must have brinjols. Right. For your perigynous, it's going to be your people pluck pink roses. Done. <laughs> easy, easy questions, easy answers. Next question, students. Which the following statement is not correct? They're telling you which is not correct at all. They're like, no, this corner statement is not correct. Rhizome is a condensed form of stem. All of you should know rhizome is basically your ginger. Ginger, have you noticed? Have you seen ginger? How many of you like ginger tea? How many of you like ginger tea? Tell me first. If this is your ginger, don't worry about the diagram. Okay. On this ginger, have you noticed these small, small lines on the ginger like this? When you take a ginger, when you make ginger tea, have you seen these lines on the ginger, like small, small lines on the ginger? Yes. Students, the lines on the ginger are basically your nodes and internodes. The lines on the ginger, can you see ginger tea? When you're making a tea, you take the ginger, right? The lines on the uh, on the ginger are basically your nodes and internodes. Now tell me in the chat, where do you find nodes and internodes? Tell me, where do you find nodes and internodes? Nodes and internodes are found in your stem, right? Stem has nodes and internodes, right? If this is your stem, this will have internode. Internode, and this is your nodal region region so basically ginger which you eat when the ginger which you eat in your putting a biryani is your stem modification is your stem modification correct the apical bud in the rhizome is always remain above the ground is it above the ground or below the ground tell me in the chat apical bud we're talking about apical bud not the entire they're not no, they're not talking about they're not talking about your stem they're talking about apical bud now the rhizome in is Aerial. The rhizome is aerial with no distinct node and internode. Obviously, this is the answer. Which is not correct, right? Not correct. We just now learnt rhizome or ginger has nodes and internodes. Answer number C. Easy question. Next question, all of you, based on estivation. Next question, based on estivation. Yes. Ready? Next question, based on your estivation. That is, match the following. Imbricate estivation. Valvate estivation, vexillary estivation, twist estivation. It's question from your NEET 2022. Go. So all of you know from this chapter, all of you are aware from this chapter that is morphology of flowering plants. The most important, the most important part is going to be your examples. If you don't remember the examples, gone, 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 gone. Take your time to answer this question. Take your time and answer this question. Let me drink some water. Yes. I'll tell you what is the best way to solve this. Best way to solve this is listen to me very carefully. For your valvate estivation, listen to me very carefully. Valvate estivation, right? Calotropis is the example. Have you seen Calotropis? Have you seen Calotropis, all of you? The milkweed? If you look at the uh, leaf of this Calotropis, it will be very soft. It will be like velvet. It will be like velvet. So please remember one thing you need to remember is velvet is your Calotropis. Yes. So velvet is going to be your Calotropis. B is going to be 1. So are these two options gone? Yes, sir. These two options are gone here. Now, all of you know, where is it? Huh. In the case of your twisted, so this is how I remember, you can make your own mnemonics. You can make your own mnemonics. So, you can make your own mnemonics, but this is what I used to do. Okay. Twisted estimation. Okay. The China rose, if you look from top, if you take the China rose, look, have you seen, all of you have seen rose? You might have got in your Valentine's Day. When you take the rose and look from up, how does it look like? Does it look twisted? Yes, it looks twisted. 
your pistol is to be sterilized. Next one is your cotton. How do I remember cotton? Very simple. All of you girls, who have you worn sari? When you try to wear a sari, do you twist the sari? You take the sari, you twist the sari. So twist the situation. The other lady's finger I remember is because my sister is little twisted in the head. My sister is little twisted in the head. So I remember it as lady's finger is twisted the situation. My sister is a little, my sister, her name I will not tell. She's a little, a little cuckoo in the head, okay. So I remember twisted the situation, lady's finger. Cotton sari, twisted. China rose, twisted. Okay. So twisted the situation is given here. Twisted estimation is given, yes, yes, it's given here. D is going to be your 3. Cotton sari told you, cotton sari, done. Okay, rest you can see, that is going to be, D is going to be your 3. Answer is here, done. Answer is here. See, how I make my mnemonics, see, my mnemonics are very special to me. That's why you will not see making me making so many mnemonics, because my mnemonics are based on my experience. Okay, so that's how you remember, lady is twisted. My sister was a little twisted in the head, so twisted estimation. So the rose, if you look from top, twisted. Sari, you wear cotton sari, twisted. <laughs> okay. Similarly, you can make for see, you can make for your imbricate estimation. Yes, imbricate estimation is going. It's where it's going to be your GC group chat, Gulmohar and Cassia. For your vexillary estimation, we have your P and bean flower. P and bean flower. Yes, lady with twisted mind it seems. I will not say anything. I will I'll get beatings otherwise. <laughs> next question, all of you. The next question is here. Okay. Which of the following plants possesses the placentation of ovule born on the central axis with a no septa? With no septa. GCS group chat. <laughs> they're talking about your free central. Right? They're talking about free central here. How do you remember free central? Tell me in the chat. How do you remember free central? Fredo, change your DP. Fredo, change your DP. Or we can say, we can take someone else's name. From F. Anyone name who starts from F here? No one's name, huh? Okay. Fredo, change your DP. D is Dianthus. P is Primrose. Basal plus. <laughs> here. Free central placentation. Free central Placentation. Students, trust me, the more questions will only come from, questions will only come from such things. So students, try to make your own mnemonics. Try to make your own things here and there, little bit here and there. You can remember it very easily. Okay. Some of them I have helped you out. Try to make your own something here and there. You will remember it better. Okay. Choose the mismatched pair of leaf with, the, uh, with its example. Mismatched. Very easy. We know Alastonia. Alastonia is your world estimation. World, world phyllotaxy. So answer is going to be your mismatch. Easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Done. Done. Everyone is stuck in behind the password. Everyone is moving ahead. All of you, students, this is how you learn biology. And here, see, bio, you have to relate a lot. If you don't relate, you will not understand. Okay. So answer is your option number A. That is Alastonia is going to be your world estimation. Mismatched is here. A for aim, aim for A for palm, palmately compound. Okay. Easy question. <laughs> Easy question, right? All of you start. Are you able to solve the question, students? Honestly, tell me in the chat. I'm, I'm looking at the chat constantly. Are you able to solve the questions? Tell me the, honestly, tell me in the chat. Are you able to solve the questions? If yes. I want everyone to in the chat to put fire or hearts. Green hearts specifically if it's botany because botany is a true love. If you're able to solve the questions, quickly fire or green hearts in the chat and I will know you're understanding the questions. You're able to solve the questions. Okay. Next question. Identify the correct statement related to the androsium in the flower. They're talking about androsium in the case of your flower. Okay. The sterile stamens are called as staminode. All of you know is correct. Okay. When stamens are attached to the petal, it is called as epipetalous condition. All of us know. Monoadalphus is seen in China. China. <laughs> How do I remember this? Again, I have a weird trick. I'll tell you the trick. I'll tell you the trick to remember this one. Like, give me two minutes. <laughs> China is number one. Okay. 
polyadelphus seen in the case of your pea plant because diadelphus we know uh, and then variation in length of anther filaments is seen in your mustard what is the answer what is the answer problem with morphology really morphology is so simple morphology is so simple what is the answer it's going to be your a is correct b is correct c is also correct and d is wrong and e is also correct now students how do you remember how do you remember ready ready for the trick ready for the weird tricks of mike baswa sir weird trick of baswa sir listen to me very carefully all of you should know epipetalous condition epipetalous condition stamens are attached to the petals stamens are attached to the petals epipetalous condition okay this trick you don't remember only one is there brinjal is there epiphyllous condition in epiphyllous condition your stamen is attached to the perianth lily is the example only one example don't need to remember that very easy okay very easy lily is the example okay where is it lily now students mono adelphus how do you remember mono means one which country is number one in population china so i remember <laughs> that's how i remember then mono adelphus is going to be see it's androsium right it talks about androsium related to your male gear male so population remember to population number one is china so china rose is the example okay two bundles is your pea plant now when you open a pea pod when you open a pea pod did it does it open into two parts when you take a pea uh, pea pod if you open the pea pod how many parts is it open it opens into two parts so diadelphus condition diadelphus condition last one is your citrus last one is your citrus in citrus do you notice many seeds yes that's why it is polyadelphus condition see seeds is not related to this polyadelphus just saying just saying that's how i remember it okay citrus will uh, your lemon or your um, uh, when you're eating orange on, on orange you take a bite on 10 uh, 10000 seeds will come right that thing that is why it's called as polyadelphus condition polyadelphus condition clear will you remember this and students the last line is very important here variation in length that is tetradynamous and didynamous condition tetradynamous and didynamous condition is seen in your salvi salvia as well as your mustard now next question messed up with mnemonics the students mnemonics should be personal trust me mnemonics should be personal when you have uh, how i made one my sister also a mnemonic no that's how you should have mnemonics honestly that's how you should have mnemonics okay next question is here try, try solving this question ha <sighs> ba the leaflets are modified into pointed hard thorns in your citrus and bougainvillea actually bird from they're asking you to choose the correct answer from the following option actually bird from slender and spire spirally coiled tendrils in cucumber pumpkin stem is flat and fleshy in open sheath and modified to perform uh, function of leaf yes phylloclad rhizophora shows vertical upward growth roots that help in oxygen respiration correct subaerial growth in stem in grass and strawberry helps in vegetative propagation correct now which is the imposter here which is the imposter yes a diaper also correct diaper also correct hmm. Hmm. i'll move aside which is the answer see students this is correct this is correct this is correct this is correct this statement is wrong option a is wrong option a is said to be wrong here now you know the answer tell me the why now you know the answer the first option is wrong the first option is wrong tell me why tell me why the song is there no tell me why now tell me why the first option is wrong anyone in the chat why tell me why can anyone tell me why is the first option wrong anyone students first option is wrong because it is not a leaf modification it is not a leaf modification it is supposed to be your stem modification if you look at your ncrd snip if you look at your ncrd snip right here that is can you see bougainvillea as well as your citrus citrus and bougainvillea are your modification of your stem they are not modification of your leaflets or leaf yes exactly hello shreya sir shreya sir is here good evening shreya sir 
फ्रेंड्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सिंपल क्वेश्चन दिस इज नॉट विजिबल ओके बेट लेट मी जूम इट फॉर यू इज नॉट विजिबल नेक्स्ट आई विल मेक इट विजिबल मोर विजिबल ओके ना क्वेश्चन इज हियर सिंपल क्वेश्चन सिंपल आंसर टेल मी यू हैव टेन मिनट्स नॉट सॉ फाइव सेकेंड सॉरी फाइव सेकेंड आंसर क्वेश्चन फाइव सेकेंड आंसर क्वेश्चन कैलेक्ट्रोपिस एस्टिवेशन आई टोल्ड यू कैलेक्ट्रोपिस लीफ इज लाइक सॉफ्ट सॉफ्ट लाइक वेलवेट आई टोल्ड यू राइट कैलेक्ट्रोपिस द लीफ इज सॉफ्ट सॉफ्ट लाइक अ वेलवेट सो एस्टिवेशन इज गोना बी वेलवेट एस्टिवेशन राइट इट इज गोना बी वेलवेट एस्टिवेशन इजी क्वेश्चन इजी आंसर easy question easy answer yes is going to be your velvet will i keep the pen hmm. yes yes vegetarian <laughs> okay next question students i'm going to zoom it for you so you can see it better now if you look at this question now students if you look at this ar question if you look at this ar question a uh, this is assertion this is the reason if you look at the ar question okay you will notice that this question is actually not a part of your flower why sir let's see the question and then let me tell you why a flower is defined as a modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem that is a flower right a flower is the uh, flower where the shoot apical meristem gets converted to your floral meristem true what is your reason interval of shoot gets condensed to produce different floral appendages lateral to the successive node instead of leaves instead of leaves now if you tell me in the chat is this question is this particular line is this particular line of your ncrt is it from your flower or is it from your in fluorescence tell me in the chat this pretty little part of this question is it from your flower or in fluorescence this is part friends both the statements are correct and it is a correct explanation of a if you look at your in fluorescence if you look at your in fluorescence it's right here given that is a flower is a modified shoot where in the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem correct assertion is correct what is the reason inter nodes do not elongate and the axis gets condensed apex produces different kinds of floral appendages lateral to the successive node at instead of leaves are you noticing direct line of your ncrt not even one word here and there such a lazy lazy question this is such a lazy question yet so many students went wrong thinking that this question is part of your flower in fact it's part of your in fluorescence clear clear questions clear questions clear answers i don't know where i kept oh got it next question now friends every one of you like the video right now and we'll go to the next question now let's go to the next question axial placentation is observed when where do you notice axial placentation axial placentation where do you notice the trick is very simple the trick is allow china to leave a is your axial placentation c for china t for tomato l for lemon l for lemon t for tomato but here if you look at the options they have given you china rose china rose yes Here only tomato is given. Diane does P are not the example. China rose is an example, but you tomato, lemon, and China rose. The most probable answer is going to be your answer number one. That is going to be your China rose, petunia, as well as your lemon, as well as lemon. Clear? Next question. Very very important question. Very easy question. Very easy question. All of you. Very very easy question. Try to solve this one. All of you. This question, okay. Before we start, let me take attendance. Let me take attendance. We will start your anatomy now. Can we start with anatomy now, students? Can we start with anatomy? 
everyone like the video right now what is this we are done we are actually done with your morphology plant kingdom as well as your living world three chapters in one and a half hour do you realize that you might have solved so many questions right now if you have solved so many questions like the video right now because i have a competition with your gopika ma'am <clears throat> yes can we start your can we start can we start with your uh, anatomy yes show me some energy students students this is this particular presentation finding such questions can you see the year ncrt year 2019 question this is question from 2019 it takes a lot of effort so show some energy because we are here teaching you i don't even have a single student sitting in front of me i don't even have a single student sitting in front of me but the energy is maintained because i know somewhere throughout the india some student is watching right now and you should not feel like you know left out during the class for that every student out there we are showing energy we are making sure the questions are being solved right yes next question is here from your anatomy of flowering plants regeneration of damaged regeneration of your damaged growing grass following the grazing is largely due to you might have noticed every single time a cow a goat is grazing they are taking away the some amount of grass but how is the grass regenerated again and again what is the secret behind it tell me in the chat quickly it is your intercalary meristem if you look at the lines of your ncrt if you look at your lines of ncrt here right here see here the meristem which occurs between the mature tissue is known as intercalary meristem that is true they occur in your grasses and regenerate the parts removed by the grazing herbivores given by the grazing herbivores are you noticing every single point is from your ncrt every single line of your ncrt is been mentioned so please students please 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 learn your ncrt read it once twice thrice at least seven times because tala for a reason <laughs> because tala for a reason that's why so seven times seven times read the ncrt and then go ahead okay next question <laughs> phloem in gymnosperms lack phloem right no one is free to chat here everyone is busy every one of my students and serious students they don't chat unnecessarily now here okay phloem in gymnosperm lacks both both sieve tubes and companion cells albuminous cells and sieve cells sieve sieve tubes only companion cells only students i want everyone read so many but forgot because you don't understand see if you only read the ncrt it's not going to get into your head you need to actually sit and understand the lines of ncrt then only you will master it right that is in the case of your gymnosperms it lacks both sieve cells and tube companion cells now tell me in the chat quickly quickly tell me in the chat if the sieve cells and companion cells both are absent what is the alternative there should be some alternative right because sieve cells and companion cells both are missing what is the alternative which gymnosperms have that is gymnosperms have what albuminous cells as well as sieve cells they can ask you a question yes they can ask you a question like this which is the alternative to uh, you know companion cells and sieve cells that is going to be your albuminous cells as well as sieve cells in the case of your gymnosperm clear understanding every single point can be a question every single point can be a question so understand the lines of ncrt like this every single line should be mastered you need to know the meaning of every word in your ncrt okay now question, students next question next question is right here the grass leaves grass leaves curl inwards during dry weather during dry weather the leaves are curling select the most appropriate reason for the following tie so tie in the vessels closure of stomata flaccidity of bulbi form cells shrinkage of air space in the spongy mesophyll which is the answer now 
Students, listen to me very carefully. Concept. Understand the concept. Understand the concept. You will notice this mostly in your dicots. You will notice this mostly in your monocots. You have you seen, have you noticed the curling of the leaf will not be like this. The curling will not be like this. The curling will be like if this is a leaf, the leaf will get curled like this. The leaf will get curled like this. Are you noticing? Have you noticed your um what do I say? Remember if I remember correctly, your um wheat leaf. Yeah, your wheat leaf or your any type of monocot leaf. Have you noticed they curl they curve like this? Yes, that is because of the bully form cells. That is because of the bully form cells, right? Because of the bully form cells. Bully form cells become very flaccid, they lose all the water, yes, and they become flaccid. Clear. See here. Now they can ask you what is bully form cells? They can ask you one more question. What is this bully form cells? Do they bully someone else? Bully form cells are your basically large empty colorless cells. What are they? They are your large empty colorless cells. They are basically modified. They are modified cells from your epidermis. See here. In grasses, certain adaxial epidermal cells along with veins modify themselves. So whatever epidermal cells are there, right? Whatever epidermal cells are there, they get modified to form the bully form cells. Next question all of you. A transverse section of a plant. Aha! Concept. Beautiful question. Beautiful, beautiful question all of you. If you are able to solve this question, your concept in your mind is set. Concept is set. Okay. Don't even look at the options. Don't even look at the options. You don't even look at the options. Look at the statements. What are the statements here? Look at the statements. The transverse section of plant shows following anatomical features. They are showing you certain anatomical features. What are they? Large number of scattered vascular bundles surrounded by bundle sheet. Large conspicuous parenchymatous ground tissue. Vascular bundles with conjoint and closed phloem parenchyma is absent. Now, let's break it down. Can we break it down for all students? Because every student should understand the concept before mugging it up or anything else. It tells here conjoined and closed. It tells you conjoined and closed. Can this be dichord by any chance? No. It cannot be dichord because it is closed here. Meaning the cambium is absent. That is there is no secondary growth. But in the case of dichord, secondary growth is present. So the answer is going to be your, the answer has to be monocot. Why? Because it is closed here. Correct? Agree with me all of you? Everyone should agree with me. It answer should be monocot because it is closed. Because there is no secondary growth. Not happening. First point clear. Now if you look at, look at the first line. Large number of scattered vascular bundles. Large number of scattered vascular bundles. Do you notice scattered vascular bundles in your stem or root, in monocot stem or monocot root? See here students, in the case of your monocot root, we have something called as polyarch condition. Yes, in the case of your monocot root, we see something called as polyarch condition. But they are telling you what? But they are telling you large number of scattered vascular bundles so answer is going to be your stem the answer is going to be stem are you following are you able to follow first we looked at this option that is conjoint and closed we decided it is going to be a stem it is going to be your monocot then we looked at your vascular bundles if your vascular bundles in the case of your monocot stem is scattered here monocot stem the vascular bundles are scattered but in the case of your monocot root, it is in polyar condition. So answer should be your monocot stem. Clear? Next question all of you. Next question all of you. Understand students, understand how to derive the question. Understand how to solve the question. You might have solved the question. That's why you know the answer repeat instantly. But you need to see some options which will help you to understand the question. Right? Next question. The type of tissue commonly found in your fruit walls of nuts. Easy question. Easy peasy question. Fruit walls of nuts. 
in the fruit walls of nuts we mainly find sclerenchyma but which type of sclerenchyma if you look at your ncrd line it's going to be your sclerets it's going to be sclerets it's not going to be sclerenchyma answer is sclerenchyma but they're asking you specific answer here they have given you a specific option that is sclerets that is sclerets so i don't believe you show the proof proof here sclerets are spherical oval or cylindrical highly thickened dead cells with very narrow cavity lumen these are commonly found in your fruit walls of nut pulp of fruits like guava peach and sapota seeds of coat of your legume and leaves of tea leaf seed leaf, leaf of your tea able to follow are you able to solve the questions yes that's how you solve the question that's how you know that one particular word of your ncrt they can take up and make a question okay now everyone next question all of you next question is on your screen that is initiation of lateral roots initiation of your lateral roots students you should not tell me later on anatomy is difficult sir anatomy is very easy if you know the concepts okay initiation of lateral roots and vascular cambium during the secondary growth takes place in the cell wall now if you tell me sir it is out of ncrt secondary growth is removed from your ncrt if this question comes if this question comes in your examination in your neat 2024 it can come it is not of ncrt it is not out of your syllabus it is within your syllabus it is this question is within your syllabus that is pericycle under your pericycle if you look at this pericycle if you look at this paragraph of your root of the pericycle if you notice here root of your pericycle you can see here dicot root the next to the endodermis lies a few layer of thick walled parenchymatous cells referred to as pericycle so endodermis pericycle initiation of lateral roots and vascular cambium during the secondary growth takes place in these cells clear so is this out of your ncrt is this question out of your ncrt out of your syllabus bonus question no it is not a bonus question because this question is within your ncrt formation of lateral roots formation of your vascular cambium during secondary growth is mainly helped from your pericycle clear next question all of you which of the following is not a character of your colon chyma not a character of your colon chyma tissue very easy question very easy question i'll give you 10 seconds 10 seconds to answer the question 10 okay take 20 seconds take 20 seconds Hmm. Answer is very simple. All of us know, parenchyma is living, colon chyma is living, and your sclerenchyma is dead. Fourth option says they are usually dead and without protoplast, and this statement is wrong and not a character means this statement is. This is going to be your answer. this is going to be your answer because we know colon chyma is a living tissue right colon chyma is a living tissue exactly d4 doctor exactly krishna d4 doctor next question easy question again axillary buds axillary buds are derived from the activity of direct ncrt line direct ncrt line axillary buds are derived from yes it is there in your syllabus students remember if you look at the nta if you look at the nta brochure it mentions that tissues are present even though they are not in your ncrt tissues are still there in your syllabus okay axillary buds develop from your activity of your apical meristem see students when the apical meristem when the apical meristem is growing listen to me very carefully when the apical meristem is growing some cells are left behind as the leaves are developing some cells are left behind those cells are called as your axillary buds those cells are called as your 
axillary bulb. See, this is your main stem which is growing. This is the nodal region. In this nodal region, this is the, we have a leaf here. One leaf is developing. This part is called as your leaf axle. In this leaf axle, some cells are left behind. In this leaf axis, some cells are left behind. These cells form the axillary bud. They form the axillary bud. Now tell me in the chat, what does the axillary bud produce? It should have some function, right? What is the function of axillary bud? Tell me the chat quickly. The function of your axillary bud. Answer is apical meristem here. The function of your axillary bud is axillary bud can either develop into a branch or a flower. It's given here. See here. The axillary bud. Can you see here? During the formation of leaves and elongation of stem, some cells are left behind from the shoot apical meristem, constitute the axillary bud. Such bud can be present on the axis of the leaf. See, I told you. They are present on the axis of the leaf. I told you that only I told you and are capable of forming your branch or flower. They are capable of forming a branch or a flower. Clear? Easy question. Again, next question here students. Anatomy. Big question. Yes, very big question. Very, very big question. Read the following statements about your vascular bundles. Question regarding the vascular bundles. All of you, solve the question with me. If you're able to solve, solve before me, answer in the chat. In roots, st in roots, xylem and phloem in vascular bundles are arranged in alternating manner along with the radii. Yes. Conjoint. Conjoint vascular bundles do not possess cambium. Okay. In, in open vascular bundles, cambium is present in between xylem and phloem. Open, yes, is present. The vascular bundles of dicot stem possesses endark protoplast. The vascular bundles of dicot stem possess endark protoplast. So endark is mainly seen endark protoplast. Okay. In monocotyledon roots, usually there are more than six xylem bundles present. Take your time and answer. Take your time. And answer very easy question. I almost gave you the answer. See, students, three are correct. I already told you monocot roots. See, stem is endark, correct. Exarch is found in your roots. Monocot root usually are more than six. Told you already. Monocot root is polyar condition. All of you know, right? Polyar condition. So, all the st all the statements are correct. Yes. All the shipments are correct here. Now, next question. Consider the following plant tissue. Axillary bud, fascicular vascular cambium, intravascular cambium, core cambium, intracatheric meristem. Identify the lateral meristem. Which of the three here are lateral meristem? 10 seconds, go. 10 seconds, all of you, just 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one times up. Intercalary meristem are your facial vascular cambium, interfacial cambium, as well as your core cambium, as well as core cambium. If you look at your NCID lines, vascular vascular cambium, then we also have your interfacial cambium. Also, we have a core cambium, which are part of your which are part of your lateral meristem. Next question: a transverse section of plant, a transverse section of plant part shows polyar condition again easy already you know the answer now if you look at the polyarch you should know the answer polyarch radial and exarch xylem with endodermis and pericycle the plant part is identify as first of all tell me if there is exarch condition if there is exarch condition is it a stem or root obviously exarch x who left your life x means the uh, protoxylem is towards the outside which is seen in your roots which is seen in your root so monocot stem is gone dicot stem is gone now we see polyar condition polyar condition is, is seen in the case of your monocot 
मोनोकॉट रूट डन मोनोकॉट रूट इजी सर सेकेंड इज आई सके सी दैट सेलेबस इज रिमूव बट क्वेश्चन आर स्टिल रिमेनिंग अपॉन सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ विथ इन योर रूट यस एंड स्टेम दो क्वेश्चन भी आस्ट इजिली सी मोनोकॉट रूट वास्तव बंडल सर्पित अकम्पेयर टू रूट विच ऑफ यूर सिक्स पॉली आर कंडीशन इन द मोनोकॉट इजी क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड डार्क एंड एक्सार्ज आर टर्म ऑफ ऑन यू टू डिस्क्राइब द पोजिशन ऑफ सेकेंडरी साइलम इन द प्लान बॉडी स्टेपमेंट नंबर वन स्टेपमेंट नंबर टू एक्सार्ज कंडीशन इज द मोस्ट कॉमन फीचर इन द रूट सिस्टम करेक्ट टेल मी इन द चार्ट आई गिव यू टेन सेकेंड आंसर क्वेश्चन विथ स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट विथ स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट विथ स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट टेन सेकेंड्स ऑल ऑफ यू Quickly like the video, all of you quickly like the video, and we'll go to the more questions because I have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions, lots and lots and lots of questions. Yes, students, the first statement is incorrect because the exarch and endarch, exarch and endarch conditions are mainly related to your primary xylem, not your secondary xylem. You see, secondary xylem. right secondary xylem is no relation it is primary xylem so first statement is incorrect second statement is correct easy question students with that with that anatomy of flowering plants is done anatomy of flowering plants is done and dusted can we start with cell chapter now students are you noticing in 1 hour 45 minutes yes we have done pyqs from past 2019 20 21 22 23 five year pyq for five chapters five chapters or four chapters living world plant kingdom morphology anatomy four chapters four chapters last five year pyq done if i ask you to do the same pyq you will never do you will be so lazy to do it right so lazy to do it but right now on the live This is why I tell you watch it live so you can solve the questions with me. You do not have to even worry so much because every single answer I am telling you, explanation I am telling you, right, friends? Now, can we start with the cell cycle, cell cell the unit of life? Can we start with the cell the unit of life now? Can we start the cell the unit of life? question i'll tell you i'll give you in the chat don't worry now can we start don't worry the entire pdf will be given to you can we start now ready ready everyone is everyone ready tell me in the chat if you're ready tell me ready if you're not ready tell me you're not ready ready can we start i want to see some josh in the chat all of you drink some water all of you drink some water and get yourself rehydrated all of you get yourself rehydrated and we will start with your stop so hey, hey, wait wait stop solving wait stop solving i'll make you solve i am here for that only now Ready? Yes. Om Namah Shivaya. I will start now. Which of the following nucleic acids is present? Which of the following nucleic acid is present in organism having 70s ribosomes only? Only in the case of your 70s ribosome. Tell me in the chat quickly. In the case of your, in the case of your 70s ribosome, is it prokaryotic or is it eukaryotic? Tell me in the chat. is it prokaryotic or is it eukaryotic students in the case of your 70s ribosome it mainly correlates with your prokaryotic organisms yes prokaryotic organisms so it is what is the answer is it single strand dna with protein coat no we cannot have protein coat here virus that is virus double strand dna uh, dna enclosed near nuclear membrane no in the case of your prokaryotic do you find nuclear membrane no you do not find nuclear membrane you do not find 
Then we have double stranded circular DNA in histone proteins. No. What is the answer? What is the answer now? The answer is going to be your double stranded circular naked DNA. Double stranded circular naked DNA because in the case of prokaryotes, it is naked DNA. There is no proper envelope. There is no nuclear envelope. Clear? Can you see here? There is no well-defined nucleus. The genetic material is basically naked. The genetic material is basically naked here. Clear? Easy question. Next question, all of you. Non-membranous, non-membranous nucleoplasmic structure in the nucleus are site for active synthesis of what? For example, if you look at the nuclear matrix, also called as nucleoplasm, we have a structure called as nucleolus. Nucleolus or nuclei is nucleoli is responsible for synthesis of which particular RNA? Tell me the chat. Nucleolus is responsible for synthesis of which particular RNA? Is it your rRNA, mRNA, tRNA or proteins? The answer is going to be C for capto, C for rRNA. C for capto, C for RNA. But sir, can you show me the NCRT line for this? Absolutely. If you look at your NCRT line, can you see here? The content of your nucleolus is con continuous with, with the rest of the nucleoplasm. It is not a membrane bound structure. Students, so remember this very important line. Nucleolus is not membrane bound structure. It is free. It is side for your active ribosomal RNA synthesis. Ribosomal synthesis is nothing but your rRNA synthesis. It is basically rRNA synthesis. Done? Next question, which of the following statement is not correct? Lysozymes are formed by the process of packaging by in the endoplasmic reticulum. Lysozymes have numerous hydrolytic enzymes. Hydrolytic enzymes of lysozymes are active under acidic pH. Correct. Lysozymes are membrane bound structures. Correct. Which is the answer now? Tell me the chat quickly, which is the answer which is not correct? Obviously, A for AIMS, A for lysozymes are packaging for your endoplasmic reticulum. No, they are not a part of your endoplasmic reticulum. They are derived from your Golgi body. They are derived from the Golgi body. Can you see here? Lysozymes are membrane bound vesicular structures. They are membrane bound vesicular structures formed by the process of packaging in the Golgi by the Golgi apparatus. Did you notice? One line of NCRT is a question. Done. Clear? It is, see, NCRT lines is given. Can you see? Ribosomal R RNA synthesis. Answer is given here, right? Dream doctor, NCRT line. I'm not making it up. Nucleo. They are talking about your nucleolus. Next question. Which the following pair of organelles does not contain DNA? 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. It is your lysozyme and vacuoles do not have the own DNA. It do not have their own DNA. Easy question, easy answer. Ah, beautiful question again. The short R, the shorter and longer R of the submetacentric chromosomes are referred to as. What is the short arm? Which is the long arm? Can tell me anyone tell me the chat? Which is the short arm? Which is the long arm? Tell me the chat quickly. Short arm and long arm. The short arm is your P arm, short arm is your P arm, long arm is your Q arm, long arm is your Q arm. If you look at the diagram here, P arm is your short arm, Q arm is your long arm. Okay? Easy question. Now, next question, next question is from your cell theory. Okay? <clears throat> the concept of 
Omnius, it sounds like Omni, no? Sounds like Omni car. Omnius cellula, e cellula, regards the cell division was first proposed by. Now, this Omnius cellula, e cellula basically tells you cells originate from pre existing cell. Cells originate from pre existing cells was given by whom? It was given by your Rudolf Virchow. Given by Rudolf Virchow. Can you see? Explain the cell. Rudolf Virchow gave the ominous cellula E cellula. Clear? Now, if they ask you, if they ask you a question, what are the two? What are the two different so, points of your cell theory? That is, first point here is all living organisms are composed of cells and product of cells. Now, quickly tell me in the chat, who gave the first term? Which two scientists independently gave the first hypothesis here? That is, one was your German, one was your German, what? German, one was German, other one was um, British, other one was your British. Tell me in the chat. The second point here is, all cells are arise from the pre-existing cells. That was given by your Rudolf Virchow. It's given here. It's given here. Sheridan and Swan. Sheridan and Swan gave the first two points. It's given here only. Okay. Next question. The size of your pleuro-pneumonia-like organisms, PPLO, what is the size of that? Simple question, simple answer. 0 0.02, 1 to 2 micrometers, 10 to 20 micrometer, 0 0.1 micrometer, answer is very simple, 0 0.1 micrometer, 0 0.1 micrometer, diagram here, can you see diagram, PPLO, 0 0.1 micrometer, 0 0.1 micrometer. Now students, they can ask you, everyone, all of you, a typical eukaryotic cell, 10 to 20 micrometer, virus, 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 micrometer, a typical bacteria, 1 to 2 micrometer. They can ask you, they can ask you students, any of such question, any of the sizes, you should know each and every one of them. Okay? Mm. Students, if you're not like the video right now, like the video right now, because the more you like the video, the more students it will reach. More students will reach, more students will benefit. Right? Next question. The biosynthesis of ribosomal RNA occurs where? Biosynthesis of ribosomal RNA occurs in. Easy question. Very, very easy question. We have already discussed this. We have already discussed this, right? Think a little cold here. We have already discussed this, right? Yes. We just now discussed this. Biosynthesis of your biosynthesis happens where? Biosynthesis happens in the nucleolus. In the nucleolus students are these questions easy for you are these questions all of you is this questions very easy for all of you easy questions right that's how questions are very very easy okay now students next question inclusion bodies of blue green purple and green photosynthetic bacteria are called as now first of all tell me in the chat inclusions body right inclusion body are they a part of your prokaryote or the eukaryote? Tell me in the chat. Are they a part of your prokaryote or are they eukaryote? All of you will tell me they are part of your prokaryote. Yes. Now, what is the function of your inclusion bodies in your prokaryote? The function of your pro function of you function of your inclusion body is mainly storage. It is mainly storage. Now, students, in the case of your blue, green, or purple or green sulfur bacteria, it is your gas vacuoles. In bacteria, it is gas vacuoles. See here. It is the reserved material. Inclusion body is a reserved material in your prokaryotes. Yes. Our cells are stored in the cytoplasm. Now, apart from the gas vacuoles, are there any other options which you need to remember, which can ask in examination? Yes. See here. Example is phosphate granules. One example. Second example is your Sinophysian granules, second one. Third one is your glycogen granules. Third one is your glycogen granules. After those three examples, we have the gas vacuoles. Last one is your gas vacuoles. 
स्टूडेंट्स रिमेंबर इन एग्जामिनेशन दे केन आस्क यू आईदर एनी वन ऑफ देम दे केन आस्क यू एनी वन ऑफ देम सो बी प्रिपेयर्ड बी प्रिपेयर्ड एनी वन कैन बी आंसर्ड क्वेश्चन नॉट ओनली द फर्स्ट टू ओके डन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट इंक्लूजन बॉडीज इज इनकरेक्ट इनकरेक्ट इजी क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ यू नो इंक्लूजन बॉडीज आर इन्वॉल्व इन द स्टोरेज वी जस्ट नाउ लर्नड सो are they involved in the ingestion of food particles no they're not involved they're asking you incorrect so answer is going to be option number 1 option number 1 clear it is a neat 2020 question neat 2020 question clear babu option number a okay they are reserved for material cytoplasm they are not membrane bound obviously they lie free in the cytoplasm clear first one is the answer a for ems exactly a for ems next question which is the important site of formation of glycoprotein and glycolipid in eukaryotic cell all of you should know this glycoprotein and glycolipid are the site of synthesis by golgi apparatus it is your golgi bodies or golgi apparatus next question the organelles that are included in the endomembrane system endomembrane system is a group of organisms sorry group of organelles it is a group of organelles which have a very common coordination they have a common coordination example is going to be what golgi complex endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria and lysosomes <laughs> endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes and vacuoles lysosomes do not come here lysosomes do not come here so endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes one second friends just correct only i was wondering why mitochondria they have given i was wondering why they have given you mitochondria mm hmm endoplasmic reticulum that is double membrane right endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosome and vacuoles which is not included here is here ha huh. mitochondria is not included and chloroplast is not included mitochondria and chloroplast are not included oh. little bit tricky see students this is what happens question concept can be remembered easily one one point here and there can be misplaced okay next question which of the following statement is incorrect again which of the following statement is incorrect incorrect statement the perinuclear space forms a barrier between materials present in the inside of the nucleus and that of the cytoplasm yes nuclear pores act as a passage for protein and rna molecules in both direction between nucleus and cytoplasm mature correct this also correct obviously correct nuclear pore that is the function of nuclear pore right that is the function of nuclear pore correct micro bodies are present in both plant and animals yes mature sieve tube elements possess a conspicuous nucleus and usually cytoplasmic organelles wrong that is your incorrect statement because in the mature in the case of your mature sieve tube elements the they are they are dead cells they are basically dead cells they do not have nucleus they do not have nucleus clear see for capto exactly see here erythrocytes see they can ask you also erythrocytes they can twist the question they can ask you erythrocytes also erythrocytes and of many mammals and sieve tube cells of vascular plants do not have the nucleus clear clear yes, clear oh god fail 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 clear students that is the easy answer next question students match the following match the following question easy question easy answer again where do you find cristae cristae is infolding of mitochondria thylakoid is a flattened membrane structure in the in the stroma of protoplast centromere is a primary constriction in your chromosomes and sister ne is part of your golgi body done done a3 yes sister ne we just told it thylakoid centromere and Sister, next question. 
when the centromere is situated in the middle of the in the middle of two equal arms of chromosome the chromosome is referred to as all of you know if the centromere is the middle it is called as metacentric m4 m4 middle m4 metacentric in nature next question if the ph of lysozymes is increased to alkaline what will be the outcome students lysozymes have hydrolytic enzymes yes now you tell me if a particular enzyme if you're changing the ph will the enzyme work proficiently will the enzyme work properly no enzyme will only work in a particular ph for your temperature done next question match the following again very easy question very very easy question take five minutes take 10 seconds take 15 seconds answer question 15 seconds drink some water and answer the question drink some water and answer the question all of you chromoplast is color that is keratonide is a color amyloplast is starch Elioplast is your oils and fats. Elioplast is going to be your proteins. Right? What is the answer now? A is going to be 4, obviously. Amyloplast is going to be your starch, I just told you. Elioplast is going to be your oil and fats, 2. Amyloplast is going to be starch. And Elioplast is going to be protein. Protein. Easy question. Direct NCID question, they can ask you, see, can you see? Direct NCID questions, everyone should know this. Very easy question. If you know what is chromoplast, if you know this paragraph, you should be able to solve this question very easily. Next question. Membrane-bound organelles of endomembrane system coordinate cellular function. True. Membrane-bound functions, membrane-bound organelles, like your endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, lysosomes, and everything, they have coordinate function. True. Mitochondria and chloroplasts are not considered a part of your endomembrane system that is also correct so what is the answer what is the answer where is it both are correct right yeah see both statement number one and statement number two are absolutely correct next question which of the following statement is correct in context of golgi apparatus it is an important site for the formation of glycoprotein protein correct it produces your cellular energy for atp formation no, there is no ADP formation in your Golgi body, right? It modifies protein synthesized by ribosomes on ER, correct? It facilitated the transport of ions, no. Facilitated the mechanical support, no. What is the answer? B and A and C. A and C is the answer. A and C is the answer. Easy question, easy answer. Yes. Next question. Which of the following function is carried out by the cytoskeletal in the cell? Now students, this is a very, very, very good question. Because every single time when you think of cytoskeletal, you mainly focus on the structural stability it provides. But what is the other function of cytoskeleton? That is very important. And based on other function of your cytoskeleton system, this is the answer. Question is the answer. Question is here. Cytoskeleton provides your motility. It provides motility. Now students, how do you know this question? How do you know this answer? By reading the lines of NCRT. See here. If you read the lines of NCRT, under your cytoskeleton, if you look at the functions, the cytoskeleton the cells are involved in the many functions such as your mechanical support. All of you know, cytoskeleton provides mechanical support. Second one is your motility. Do you notice here? Motility is given here. Motility and maintenance of your shape of the cell maintenance of the shape of the cell that is very important so students some of you might tend to miss out this that's why this is a question now okay next question uh, students we are done with cell chapter now we are done with cell chapter now we will be starting off with biomolecules are you excited for biomolecules is this your favorite chapter can we start with biomolecules now Quickly, thumbs up in the chat, fire in the chat, hearts in the chat, lightning in the chat, or anything you want in the chat if you are excited for biomolecules. Okay? Every one of you, like the video right now. If you have not liked it, if you have not marked your attendance right now, like the video right now 
and we'll be starting off with biomolecules which is my personal favorite chapter okay personal favorite chapter biomolecules can we start can we start biomolecules in the chat students yes biomolecules op yes now prosthetic group let me read the question let me read the question and we'll solve it okay prosthetic group differs from coenzyme in which prosthetic group which is a type of your cofactor coenzyme is also a type of cofactor how does these two different cofactors differ okay differ no break uh, break after break will only and only come after before we start your plant physiology okay after biomolecules we have your uh, cell cycle and cell division after that break no break until then serious studies students you can't afford to take break when you're doing serious studies right they require metal ions for this activity no they prosthetic groups are tightly bound to the apo enzyme their association to the apo enzyme is transient they can serve as cofactor in a number of reaction enzyme catalyzed reaction so all of you should know all of you should know should know that prosthetic groups are tightly bound they are very tight like for a brief period of time is there a where do i keep the pen i don't know where i kept the pen hmm. that is prosthetic groups are tightly bound to the apo enzyme if you look at this paragraph friends if you look at this paragraph right here you will get at least around around 5 pyqs and you can expect a one more pyq again this year from this paragraph alone so can i tell you this paragraph give me five give me three minutes or two minutes let me tell you what you need to know from this paragraph alone ready all of you should notice that all of you should notice that prosthetic groups are organic compounds and are distinguished from other cofactors your prosthetic groups are distinguished from other cofactors because prosthetic groups are tightly arranged can you see here they are tightly bound to the apo enzyme they are tightly bound to the apo enzyme and remember students apo enzyme is the protein part apo enzyme is the protein part and your cofactor is the non protein part that you need to know first of all okay example is very important example for every single one is important example for your prosthetic group is example for your prosthetic group is is your peroxidase and catalase example for prosthetic group is peroxidase as well as catalase which catalyze the breakdown of hydrogen peroxidase hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen hem hem is the prosthetic group here so in the reaction in the reaction catalyzed by your reaction catalyzed by the enzyme which is the enzyme catalase and peroxidase are the enzymes but which is the prosthetic group the example for prosthetic group is going to be there also the organic compounds but their association with the apo enzyme is only transient so coenzyme are transiently bound they are not bound tightly first point here example is very important example is the coenzymes is coenzyme is what nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide nad and nadph contain vitamin niacin they contain vitamin niacin which is the coenzyme here is the coenzyme which is coenzyme is NAD, nad and nadh nad nadph next one the last one is your a number of enzymes require metal ions the third example is your metal ion example that is for the activity from which metal ion example is relative to the example example is zinc metal ion zinc is the cofactor for the proteolytic enzyme act a proteolytic enzyme carboxy peptidase carboxy peptidase is the enzyme the cofactor is going to be zinc which is a metal ion 
friends you will get a lot of questions from this paragraph a lot of questions from this paragraph so please remember this paragraph for your examination in biomolecules now which of the following organic compound is the main constituent of lecithine start answering which of the following organic compound is the main constituent of lecithine all of us know lecithine is a type of your phospholipid it's a part of your phospholipid phospholipid oh it's here it's phospho phospholipid it's phosphoprotein i don't phospholipid here phospholipid this is pro, i didn't see protein but phospholipid this is a type part of your phospholipid here phospholipid example is lecithine next one concalvulin a concalvulin a is what what is concalvulin a can you tell me chat is it a pigment is it an alkaloid is it an essential oil or is it a lectin or is it a lectin tell me the chat now this particular question students from your biomolecules there are main two main very important two tables one table is for your secondary metabolites the other uh, the other one is for protein and enzyme action two tables very important all of us know concalvulin is a lectin it is a lectin very important ravindrani it is not b it is d it is a lectin if you look at this table very important table concalvulin a can you see concalvulin a is a lectins clear lectin they can ask you drug drug is going to be vinblastin and curcumin polymeric substance can be your see students question is there you have a question you have a question here can you see here polymeric substance rubber gums and cellulose so there is a ar question based on the cellulose here alkaloids is morphine and codeine terpenoids is monoterpene diterpene essential oil is going to be lemongrass oil and pigments is going to be cannabinoids anthro antho cyanins antho cyanins very important now answer this question all of you which of the following glucose transporters is insulin dependent glucose transport which transport is it glut4 1 2 3 4 the answer is going to be it is a see it is derived from an alkaloid derivation okay the answer is going to be your glut4 if you look at this table right here glut4 enables glucose transport into the cell easy question see or they can ask you what is the function of collagen intercellular ground substance what is the function of trypsin which is an enzyme in uh, insulin hormone antibody fight infection agents receptors sensory receptors example smell taste hormone hormones etc so glut4 is your helps in transportation okay now identify the basic amino acids from the following easy question which of the following is a basic amino acid tell me the chat quickly basic amino acid the answer is very simple it is your lysine as well as arginine and lysine and histidine but the answer only one is given here that is your lysine is the answer now tell me in the chat what about tyrosine what about tyrosine is it a aromatic amino acid true or false is it a aromatic amino acid true or false tell me in the chat what about glutamic acid glutamic acid is your acidic amino acid okay next question identify the substance having the glycosidic bond and peptide bond respectively in the structure glycosidic bond will be present in your where in your saccharides right in a type of a, in, in, in your carbohydrates the answer here is inulin inulin is a polymer of your fructose many fructose molecules inulin will have will have your glycosidic bond in your carbohydrates insulin remember insulin is a type of protein yes it has a chain b chain yes so it will have your peptide bond protein peptide bond answer is 3 answer is 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच द फॉलोइंग इज द मोस्ट अबंडेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन मोस्ट अबंडेंट प्रोटीन इन द एनिमल वर्ल्ड मोस्ट अबंडेंट प्रोटीन इन द एंटायर ऑफ योर एनिमल वर्ल्ड द आंसर इज गोना बी योर कोलाजिन आंसर इज गोना बी कोलाजिन नाउ देखना आज की वन मोर क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज द मोस्ट अबंडेंट प्रोटीन इन द एंटायर बायोस्फीयर देखना आज की क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज द अबंडेंट प्रोटीन इन द एंटायर बायोस्फीयर दैट टाइम योर आंसर शुड बी रुबिस्को इट शुड बी रुबिस्को क्लियर रुबिस्को इज द abundant protein in the whole biosphere in the animal kingdom it is collagen in the in the animal world in the animal world clear are you understand students this is how we'll ask you question they'll twist and turn the questions i can ask you i'm making you sure you don't miss out any points from your ncrt okay next question is here following other statements with reference to lipids they're giving you some lipid statements true or false or they have to tell me which statement is correct lipids having Only single bond are called as unsaturated fatty acids. No, if there is single bond, it is called as saturated. Unsaturated means double or triple bond. Lecithin is a phospholipid lipid. Yes, we just told you. Trihydroxypropane is glycerol. Correct. Palmitic acid is twenty carbon, twenty carbon compound. No, palmitic acid is sixteen carbon. While your arachidonic acid is going to be twenty carbon. So wrong, wrong. What is the answer? B and C only. Yes, B and C only. Such an easy question. Now next question. Identify the incorrect pair. Incorrect pair. Remember that time. How many of you watched uh, Breaking Bad series? In the Breaking Bad series, we have a character called as Walter White. Okay. Walter White basically makes a poison in one of the seasons. Spoiler alert. He makes a poison from your mustard. Right, castor, castor, not mustard, castor. From castor, that poison is called as ricin poison. That is a type of toxin. That is a type of your toxin. So ricin is a type of your toxin along with your abrin. Abrin and ricin are your toxin. It is the mismatched pair. It is your mismatched pair here. Drugs are going to be what? Drugs are going to be your vinblastin as well as curcumin. Curcumin is obtained from your Curcumin longa, which is your turmeric. When blastin is obtained from your vinca rosa, it is obtained from vinca rosa, which has anti cancer, which has anti cancerous property. Okay, next question. Next question is here. Don't look at the options. Just see the uh, just see the question. Forget the options for now. Okay, first one you have protein. Protein will have what? Protein will have your peptide bond. Unsaturated fatty acids will have CC double bond. Nucleic acid will nucleic acid will have your phosphoric acid bond. Phos uh, phosphoric acid bond. Ph polysaccharides will have your glycosidic bond. Yes. Done. A is four. A is four. B is one. B is one. C is two. Yes. C is going to be your phosphoric acid bond. What happened? Phosphoric acid bond. Well, and D is going to be three. That is, D is going to be your glycosidic bond. Easy question. Yes, easy question. Next question. Which of the following is not a secondary metabolite? Which of the following is not? Again, not a secondary metabolite. If you know the table, you should be able to answer very easily. When blasting curcumin, we just learned drugs. Rubber and gums, we learned it is part of it. Morphine and codeine, also part of it. Amino acids and glucose, imposter. Amino acids and glucose are your primary metabolites. They are not the secondary metabolites. The answer is going to be four. Answer is going to be four. Clear? The answer is going to be four here. Next question. In the enzyme which catalyzes the breakdown of, there is an enzyme called as your peroxidase, right? Peroxidase and catalase H2O2, hydrogen peroxide is converted to your water and oxygen. The prosthetic group. Remember, I told you in your prosthetic group, only example is given here. Hem. Hem is the example which is given here. Answer is simple. Hem is the example. Right? Prosthetic group. Remember the paragraph I told you. In your paragraph, prosthetic group paragraph, the first one, your catalase and peroxidase function. Prosthetic group was your hem. Done. 
your again see hem is the prosthetic group for your peroxidase and catalase for the conversion of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen now easy question again if a and c if a is 30 percent c is also <coughs> c is 20 percent respectively what will be the percentage of your thymine and guanine see students at gc all of you know chargo rule at <coughs> gc if adenine is 30 percent thymine is going to be 30 percent thymine is also going to be 30 percent 30 plus 30 is going to be 60 percent yes 60 percent is consumed now what is left 100 minus 60 is 40 percent so 40 percent is left for your gnc 40 percent can be divided into 20 percent 20 percent 20 percent c g is going to be your 20 percent done what is the answer given anywhere uh time is going to be 30 percent uh, here option number two done easy question easy answers next question students amino acids have a property of ionizable nature of nh2 and coh group hence have different structure of different uh, different structure at different ph yes whenever they're in acidic medium they change the structure when they're basic medium they change the structure true amino acids can have can exist as zwitter ion at acidic and basic ph right a zwitter ion is an ion which has both acidic as well as basic structures it can have a coh as well as nh2 group true so what is the answer both the statements are correct both the statements are absolutely correct full marks full marks to all of you full marks to twinkle next question primary protein is also known as polypeptide now students you can go wrong here let me tell you a clarification you might go wrong here but let me clarify it they are linear chains true they are polymers of peptide monomers true successive mono, uh, mono, uh, mono amino acids are joined by peptide bond also true they can assume many conformations not so correct now what is the answer here now you should focus on one line here all of you should focus on polypeptide forget the primary proteins forget the primary proteins primary proteins many answers can be correct here but focus on your polypeptide now how do you form polypeptide polypeptide chain is formed by addition of many amino acids a successive amino acids are joined by peptide bond is the right answer the most probable answer that you have to check now you need to look at the most probable answer for primary protein as well as polypeptide 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 means many peptide bond is formed how by addition of peptide bond so most probable answer is going to be answer number c answer number c okay need 2022 question need 2022 question only 50 percent made correct other 50 percent have gone for here clear next question students easy question again again very easy question look here adenine is a purine a to 4 anthocyanin is a pigment chitin is a alkaloid chitin is sorry chitin is a polysaccharide homopolysaccharide chitin is a polysaccharide codeine is your alkaloid codeine is a alkaloid a is 4 done b is 1 done c is 2 done codeine alkaloid done easy clear a is 4 a is 4 b is 1 p is going to be 3 and d is going to be your d is going to be 3 c is going to be 2 next question easy question again students listen to me very carefully all of you in a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme which of the following statement is correct which of the following statement is correct in a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme which of the following statement is correct enzyme decrease the activation energy for the formation of transient state enzyme make transient state form transient form substrate to to product more difficult they don't enzyme is enzyme is increasing the activation energy enzyme substrate complex form during the reaction lasts for very long time no 
so all of us know if you know the diagram here see this is without enzyme activation energy this is without enzyme can you see the activation energy is required to cross the bridges a lot so what does the enzyme do enzyme will decrease the activation energy they will give you very less energy to pass so can the and can the reactant become product very easily now can you see the activation energy is reduced with the enzyme so enzyme decrease the activation energy to form formation of by formation of transient state by formation of a transient stage done easy question next question all of you cellulose is a polymeric polysaccharide did we learn this from the table from the table did we learn this it is a polymeric polysaccharide building blocks of cellulose is glucose molecules all of us know cellulose is made up of monomer of glucose again so both the statements are absolutely correct here both the statements are statement number 1 statement number 2 both are absolutely correct next question read the following statements on lipids and find out the correct set of statements lecithine found in the plasma membrane is a glycolipid no it is a phospholipid yes it is a phospholipid saturated fatty acids possess one or more cc bond no saturated as fatty acids will not have double bond right saturated fatty fatty acids will have single bond gingelly oil has lower melting point hence remain all in the winter is correct lipids are generally insoluble in water true lipids are generally insoluble in water but are lipids soluble in other organic solvents yes correct when fatty acids is esterified with glycerol fatty acid plus glycerol will give you mono glyceride true what is the answer c d n e where is it here c d n e done option number 4 see here gingelly oil has lower melting point that is gingelly oil in the winter and one more thing fatty acids are formed by esterification of glycerol right they can be mono glycerides diglycerides or triglycerides clear next question exoskeleton of arthropod is made up of chitin important easy question easy answer they have given you in neat when when to you can answer this question in just 2 seconds chitin next question which of the following is not not a secondary metabolite they are asking you which of the following is not a secondary metabolite what are the options curcumin we know it is secondary metabolite anthocyanin we know it is secondary metabolites morphine we know it is a secondary metabolite what about what about your lecithin lecithin is not a secondary metabolite lecithin is a part of lecithin is a part of your phospholipid part of your phospholipid that is option number 4 easy answer lecithin students if you are able to solve these questions quickly like the video i know questions these are easy questions because we know biomolecules so well we are able to solve such questions okay inulin is a polymer of fructose i told you already inulin is a polymer of fructose given below two statements now we have two statements here let me zoom in for you let me zoom in for you what is the first statement first statement is very simple what happened to the ppt ppt closed students suddenly ppt closed i don't know how many slides we even went i think we crossed 200 slides yes i think we crossed 200 slides Oh, we are almost towards the end, is it? So there are students. There are totally three hundred slides. In total, three hundred slides. We are at two fifty slide already. No, three sixty eight slides. Sorry, three sixty eight slides. We have hundred more slides to go. Ready now? Next question. Let me zoom in for you. 
here look first statement is saying that a protein is imagined as a line a protein is imagined as a line the uh, answer is yes students Protein is imagined as line. The left end is uh, represented by first amino acid C. The right amino right end is represented by last amino acid N. All of us know. All of us know. See, the first statement is false because the first amino acid, the first amino acid is represented by N terminal. First is represented by N terminal, and the right side, and the right end is represented by the last amino acid is. C terminal, C terminal. That is the correct answer. So this is false statement. Second statement is adult hemoglobin consists of four subunits. That is two chains, two alpha chains, and two beta chains. That is a quaternary structure. Hemoglobin is a quaternary structure of protein. Statement two is correct. Next question. Malonate inhibits. Very important question. Repeated question. Malonate inhibits the growth of pathogenic bacteria. By inhibiting the activity of, this is the type of your competitive inhibitor. Type of your competitive inhibitor. Yes, malonate inhibits the growth of pathogenic bacteria by inhibiting the activity of your succinate dehydrogenate. By inhibiting the activity of succinate dehydrogenate. If you look at your NCID line, inhibition of succinate dehydrogenase by malonate, which closely resembles the substrate succinate in its structure. Such competitive inhibitors are often used in the control of bacterial pathogen. Bacterial pathogen. So malonate will control your malonate will malonate um, inhibit the inhib inhibition of succinate dehydrogenase by malonate. Next question: Cellulose does not form. Cellulose does not form blue colored with iodine. Very simple. Because cellulose does not have your what? Cellulose does not have your side branching cellulose is very straight beta 1 for linkage straight but in your amylopectin we have one alpha 1 6 in cellulose we do not have alpha 1 6 it does not form many helicals it does not con 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 does not contain complex helicals and hence cannot hold iodine molecule it cannot hold iodine molecule that is the end of your biomolecules that is the end of biomolecules now students, can we take a 10 minutes break or rather 10 minutes break, can we take a 10 minutes break and can we start after 10 minutes, can we start with your cell cycle and cell division and three chapters of your plant physiology, okay, okay, can we take a 10 minutes break now. What is the time? 7.45. Clear? Okay. I know all of you need break, right? All of you might be breaking. Class will resume at 7.55. Okay. So can we start at 7.55, all of you? Yes. Medical aspirant. Don't worry, medical aspirant. We can, we can. We can start at your 7.55 will start. Okay. Okay. Until 7.55, let's take a small break. I also drink more. My water is over. Technically, my water is over here. My water is over here. So, until we'll wait now. Okay. Cool. So, before you go, like the video right now and then we can resume in some time.
वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक एवरी वन लेट मी एड इन लेट मी एड इन टेलीग्राम ब्रेक इज ओवर ज्वाइन बैक ब्रेक इज ओवर ज्वाइन बैक Welcome, welcome, welcome. How is everyone doing? Students, are you able to solve the questions? Is the questions getting difficult? Are the questions very easy? How is it going till now? How is the preparation coming along? Are we able to solve the questions? If you have finished the entire syllabus by at least once or at least twice, you should be able to solve all of these questions. Okay. Welcome back. Can we start with same jokes and same energy? Can we start the remaining part of your PYQ series? That is. leftover questions now we started off with your living world done morphology done anatomy done after that we did plant kingdom also done then we also did your cell 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 unit of life done biomolecules also done now we'll be starting off with cell cycle and cell division now here there are few lines especially in your pro phase 1 yes leptotin zygotin pacotin dikinesis whatever is happening in these events question will be asked what is happening in anaphase 2 what is happening in metaphase what is happening in the es phase all of these can be asked as a question which we will see in the next slides so can we start students can we start with the can we start with the cell cycle and cell division now this is a very easy very very easy chapter if you have the notes which i made if you have my notes This chapter is going to be so easy. You don't even have to study NCERT for this. Don't even have to study NCERT for this. Every single question you will be able to answer. First question is here. Crossing over. Crossing over takes place between. Uh, crossing over takes place between which chromatids and which stage of the cell cycle? All of us know crossing over happens between non-sister chromatids of a homologous chromosome. Yes. non sister chromatids of homologous chromosome at your pacotin stage at the first stage at the pacotin stage the crossing over happen leptotin zygotin pacotin third stage pacotin a crossing over is happening crossing over is happening of pro phase 1 ncrd proof i got you covered see here at pacotin during the stage the four chromatids are each bivalent chromosome becomes distinct and clearly appear this stage is characterized by the appearance of the recombination nodules see students this can also be asked as a question where do you see recombinant nodule formation where do you notice recombinant nodule formation recombinant nodule formation happens also at the pacotin stage also happens at the pacotin stage the sites at which the crossing over occurs so what happens at the recombination nodules crossing over of the non sister chromatids of a homologous chromosome takes place between non sister chromatids of the homologous chromosome pacotin stage done next question after meiosis 1 meiosis 1 is completed right chromosome number has decreased into half chromosome number has reduced the resultant daughter cells will have what about the dna same amount of dna as in your parents in yes phase twice the amount of dna in the comparison to the haploid comparison to the haploid same amount of dna in comparison to the haploid gametes four times the amount of dna in comparison to the haploid gametes haploid gametes compared to haploid gametes after meiosis 1 the cells will have double the number the cells will have double the number twice the amount of dna in comparison to the haploid easy question yes very easy question i hope you are able to solve such questions next question is again very simple that is the correct sequence of phases in cell cycle what is the correct sequence students i want everyone to answer the question doesn't matter i'm telling you repeatedly repeatedly i'm telling you doesn't matter if you have you know if you are able to solve the questions it doesn't matter all i want you to do is 
attempt the questions. Attempt the question doesn't matter, it's wrong, right, nothing. Attempt the questions, everyone. The current sequence of your phase of your cell cycle, all of us know it's going to be G1, yes, G2, and M. G1, yes, G2, and M. Everyone should attempt, every single student should attempt the questions. Yes, keep on spamming. It doesn't matter if you, if you, if you spam. Doesn't matter. Keep spamming the answers if you know the answer. Okay, if you don't also you start spamming. The cells in the G2 phase have what? Terminate the cell cycle, exit the cell cycle, enter the cell cycle, suspend the cell cycle. So all of us know G0, G0 is called as quiescent stage in which the cells become metabolically active. They will be metabolically active, but they'll become suspended. They'll become suspended. Next question. Question from your NEET 2020. During meiosis 1, in which stage synapsis takes place? The formation of synapsis happens at which phase? Everyone answer? Very easy questions. Very, very easy questions. I want every student to attempt. Doesn't matter wrong or right. No discrimination. No judgment here. Okay? No judgment. Try attempting. Synapsis takes place at your zygotin stage. At the second stage of the zygotin stage. If you look at your NCRD SNP, can you see here? In the zygotin stage, there is formation of synapsis and also there is formation of synaptonemal complex. Remember, in the zygotin stage, in the zygotin stage, we have the formation of synaptonemal complex. Done. Now, one more thing I want all of you to remember. One more thing I want all of you to remember here is it is suspended because it can have further use but if it exits the cell cycle it will not be using later on but it is suspended because it has some use later on it can become active again the complex formed by the pair of synapsed homologous chromosome is called as bivalent or tetrad so bivalent or tetrad condition is noticed in your zygotine stage in the zygotine stage so synaptonemal complex formation as well as bivalent or tetravalent tetrad formation happens clear clear yes next question attachment of spindle fibers to kinet cores of chromosome becomes evident in that is attachment of spindle fibers the spindle fibers are coming the spindle fibers are joining at the kinet core it becomes evident when do we see the spindle fibers Attachment of spindle fibers. Attachment of spindle fibers is mainly noticed in the metaphase. In the metaphase. When they align in the equatorial plate. When they align in the equatorial plate, it becomes more and more evident. Okay. Students, make your mistakes right now. Do not make your mistakes in the examination. Okay. D for Dolakpur. Yes. Option number D. It's here. Next question. Dissolution of Synaptonemal complex. See, formation of synaptonemal complex, formation is happening in your zygote stage. But dissolution happens at which stage? Can anyone tell me in the chat? When does the dissolution of synaptonemal complex happens? Dissolution happens at your next stage, that is diplotene stage. Right? Diplotene stage. And you see here. In diplotene stage, dissolution of the synaptonemal complex. Dissolution of synaptonemal complex is happening at the diplotene stage. Okay? Clear? Yes. Exiting at synaptonemal exit uh, at dissolution happens at the diplotene stage. Easy question. Next question. Identify the correct statement with regards to G1 phase or gap 1 of interface. Gap 1 of interface. Now, what is happening or what is the correct statement? That is, it reorganization of cell components takes place. The cell is metabolically active and grows but does not replicate its DNA. Nuclear division takes place. DNA synthesis or replication takes place. All of you know, in the G1 phase, there is no replication of DNA. Replication of DNA is not happening at all. So, answer is what? Re cell is metabolically active and grows but does not replicate its DNA. Replication of DNA is happening in your yes phase. Okay. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच स्टेज ऑफ मेमोटिक प्रोफेस वन शोस टर्मिनेशन ऑफ कायस मेटा टर्मिनेशन ऑफ कायस मेटा इज हैपनिंग एट विच फेस इजी क्वेश्चन द लास्ट फेस दैट इज गोना बी योर डायकाइनसिस द लास्ट फेस ऑफ योर प्रोफेस वन इज गोना बी डायकाइनसिस इन विच कायस मेटा इज कंप्लीटली डिसॉल्व टर्मिनेशन let us final stage of your meiotic phase diakinesis this is marked by the termination of chiasmata termination of chiasmata clear clear now students next question centrioles centrioles undergo duplication during now centrioles are involved in the pulling your pulling pulling apart your chromosomes yes Now, centriole duplication happens at G1 or G2. Yes. If you read 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 the lines of NCERT, along with the duplication of DNA, centrioles are also duplicating. Now, duplicate DNA duplication happens at which phase? Duplication of DNA happens in the yes phase. So, centrioles also happens at the yes phase. At the yes phase. See here, DNA replication in begins in the nucleus, and centriole duplication happens in the yes phase. Centriole duplication also happens in the S phase. Now, which of the following stages of meiosis involves division of centromere? When is the centromere separating out? Now, one clue is in this stage separation of homologous chromosome happens. Separation of so, separation of your chromatid takes place. Separation of chromatid takes place. Not chromosome, chromo, chromatid takes place. C for Chennai. Yes, C for Chennai. Now here you tell me, A for Andhra Pradesh now. Yes, it is your anaphase two. In your anaphase two, it begins with splitting of your centromere of each chromosome. Centromeres has to split up. Clear? Next question. I told you remember already. Bivalent or tetrad formation is the characteristic feature of your observed during. I told you bivalent or tetrad. Where do you notice, students? Where do you notice synaptonemal complex in the zygote in stage? Remember that. Remember that. Yes. Again, A for Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Again, A for Andhra Pradesh. See, I one line of NCERT can make you so many questions. Next question. In meiosis, crossing over and exchange of genetic material. Between homologous chromosome are catalyzed by the enzyme. See, crossing over is happening. All of us know, but which is the enzyme responsible? The enzyme responsible is going to be your B for Bangalore now. B for Bangalore here. Recombinase. It is recombinase is involved here. Clear? How is A for CSK? C is for CSK. No. Next question. <laughs> okay. appearance of recombination nodules did we study this recombination nodules did we study recombination nodules tala for reason is 7 not now okay <laughs> recombination nodules when do you study and on homologous chromosome during the meiosis characterized by i told you recombination nodules are reco uh, is involved with the crossing over involved with the crossing over side for crossing over option number 4 direct line from your ncert next question during g0 cell during g0 phase of cell cycle the cell is metabolically inactive no the cell is not metabolically inactive the cell may be suspended it is not inactive it is not inactive wrong the centrome the uh, the centromes undergo duplication during the s phase of interface Correct. Statement one is correct. Statement two is wrong. Here, easy question. Option number one. Option number one. Next question, students. That is the end of your cell chapter. That is the end of your cell chapter. Done. Now, can we start with the plant physiology? Quickly tell me in the chat by liking the video right now. Like the video. Let me check the attendance. How much is the attendance? like the video right now all of you to 36 come on students like the video right now 
like the video right now and we will start with the plant physiology can we start everyone in the chat let's go yes let's go with plant physiology can we start now i want to see some energy in the chat if i want to start plant physiology because the questions are beautiful beautiful questions can we start yes like the video right now mark your attendance mark the attendance and we'll be starting off with the plant physiology that's right plant physiology where students go Ooh, very difficult right very easy very easy all of you plant physiology is going to be very easy and we'll be starting now can you start ready yes fire in the chat everyone the first question is here let me zoom in for you let me zoom the question for you one scientist called as your T.W. Engelman, T.W. Engelman cultured cladophora in a suspension of acetobacter, which is your aerobic bacteria and illuminated the culture by splitting the light through a prism. He observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the region of, mainly in the region of your red and blue region, red as well as blue region. Quick students, now I want everyone to be hyper. I want everyone to be hyper now. Last stretch. This is going to be last stretch for your entire plant physiology. The option number D, blue and red, red light. Blue and red light. Yes. Next question. In hatch and slack pathway. In hatch and slack pathway. Tell me first point. Hatch and slack pathway. Is it C3 pathway, C2 pathway or is it C4 pathway? Tell me in the chat. In hatch and slack pathway, which is also called as your C4 pathway, primary CO2 acceptor is, the primary acceptor of CO2 is, the primary acceptor of CO2 is going to be your PEP, it's going to be PEP also called as phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate in the presence of an enzyme called as pepcase, we get a compound called as oxaloacetic acid, yes oxaloacetic acid next question all of you during non-cycle non-cyclic photophosphorylation during the non-cyclic photophosphorylation when electrons are lost all of you know in non-cyclic electrons are not coming back lost electrons are lost okay electrons are lost uh, electrons are lost from the reaction center at PS2. What is the source of replaced electrons? How are the electrons are being replaced in the non-cyclic photophosphorylation? All of us know in non-cyclic photophosphorylation, there is something called as splitting of water, right? Hydrolysis of water. Here, option number two. Option number two, water. Next question. The oxygenation activity. Now tell me in the chat, when we speak about when we speak about oxygenation activity, is it a C2 cycle? Is it a C3 cycle? Is it a C4 cycle? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat. When we talk about oxygenation activity, so if you know Rubisco, Rubilo, Rubisco, Rubi, Rubi, or Rubisco can have your oxygenase and carboxylase. If it has carboxylase, we can use it in C4. If it has a oxygenase activity, it is mainly involved in your photorespiration. It is C2 cycle. Also called as your photorespiration. Photorespiration which is also your very wasteful process. Very wasteful process. What process? What happens? One molecule of C3 compound, one molecule of 6 compound, a molecule of four carbon compound and one molecule of two carbon compound, two molecules of C3 compound. Take your time and answer. Take your time and answer. C2, it is C2, a wasteful process. Oxygenase activity. Oxygenase is happening. Oxygenase is happening. What is formed? Students, don't go wrong here. Don't go wrong here. Don't go wrong here. Yes. No. What is the answer? Students, if you know, in a C2 cycle, right, in a C2 cycle, there is one three carbon compound, right, and one two carbon compound. 
right? One three carbon compound and one two carbon compound. If you know, the three carbon compound is going to be your PGA. The three carbon compound is going to be your PGA. Yes, that is correct. In a C two cycle, we have PGA. We also have a two carbon compound. The two carbon compound is going to be your phosphoglycolate. It is going to be phosphoglycolate. But have they mentioned any two carbon compound here? No. So the most probable answer is going to be what? Most probable answer is going to be your one molecule of three carbon compound. One molecule of three carbon compound. Okay. Clear. Next question. In light reaction. In light reaction, the plastoquinone, plastoquinone facilitates the transfer of electrons from. How are electrons being transferred? If you look, if you look at the non-cyclic phosphorylation, in the phospho non-cyclic phosphorylation from PS2, this is PS2. When electrons are going, they go from your from PS2, they go to your plastoquinone, and then they go to your cytochrome cytochrome b6f complex then they go somewhere else and they come and then they go again up and they go again up they go to ps1 so the answer is going to be your ps2 to cytochrome b6f complex cytochrome to b6f complex okay now for this particular answer you need to know the cycle draw the cycle and understand unless you draw the cycle you will not understand Draw the cycle and understand, then only you will get to your mind. Okay. Next question. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Again, they are asking you which of the following statement is incorrect again. Grana lamella have both PS1 and PS2. Yes. Correct. Cyclic photophosphorylation involves both PS1 and PS2. No. Then answer. Because in a cyclic, in a cyclic, we do not have both PS1 and PS2. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat. In cyclic photophosphorylation, do we have PS1 or do we have PS2 in the chat? That is going to be your homework question also. Okay. So this is your incorrect statement. It is there are both are not present. Only one photosystem is present. Tell me which one. Okay. For the previous question, you need to know the cycle. Unless you know the entire cycle of your light reaction, the Z scheme, you need to know the Z scheme for this. If you watch, if you watch my one-shot lecture on your photo photosynthesis in higher plants, just go to the just go to the Z scheme, and you will be able to understand from the cycle. Okay. Next question: The first stable product of your C2 fixation is sorghum. Now tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat. Sorghum is it part of your C2 cycle? Is it part of your C3 cycle, or is it part of your C4 cycle? Tell me that first of all. Tell me that first of all. Sorghum is part of your C2, C3 or C4. That thing you should tell me first. So all of you know sorghum is a monocot. It is a part of your C4 cycle. It is part of your C4 cycle. In your C4 cycle, the first CO2 acceptor is going to be PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate. Correct. When phosphoenol pyruvate accepts the CO2, we get a product called as your oxalo acetic acid we get a product called as oaa oa is the product oxalo acetic acid is the product and students if you're able to solve such questions quickly like the video right now right now we are done we like the video and also if you're new to the channel from this on to vedant to neat english quickly subscribe to the channel also go on subscribe to the channel if you're able to solve such questions next question is from your need 2022 diet line from your ncrt that is, following crops have been extensively cultivated in the CO2 rich atmosphere for higher yield. That is, if you read your NCRT, that is, effects, factors affecting your photosynthesis, factors affecting photosynthesis, and if you go under the one paragraph, you will notice about greenhouse gases. In your greenhouse, we mainly grow your tomato and bell pepper. Bell pepper is like your red capsicum. That is your red capsicum, right? Red capsicum. So, tomato and bell pepper are mainly there. They grow nicely in your nicely grow in your CO2 rich environment. Okay. Next question. Splitting of water molecule takes place in the inner side of the membrane. True. 
proton accumulation within the lumen of the alkaloid primary electron accept, accept primary acceptor of electron transferring electron the electrons to the electron carrier the primary acceptor of electrons transfer the electrons to the electron carrier nadph reductase enzyme is located in the stroma side of the membrane proton increase in the number of stroma which of the following statement is correct which of the following statement is correct now tell me in the chat how many of the statements are correct take your time and read the statements take your time and read the statements Hmm. How much time will you take in the session? Probably 30 minutes. Probably 30 more minutes, right? Read the statements. Hmm. Yes. See, students, this is from your chemo osmotic theory. Students, if you download the PDF, if you download the PDF, you will get which topic ncrt and year can you see year also is mentioned here year is also mentioned here what is the answer option number two exactly see splitting of water happens in the inner inner membrane of your membrane where splitting of water happens for your production of your proton right uh, proton accumulated within the lumen of thylakoid yes for the proton gradient to increase in the lumen more and more splitting is happening and we have more and more uh, lumen we have more and more th in the more protons in lumen then we have primary acceptor of electrons transfer electron to electron carrier no because primary acceptor of electron will transfer the electron to other carriers yes NADPH reductase is located in the stroma side no not located in the stroma side it's also located in the stroma side what am i saying located in the stroma side and proton increase in the stroma no they decrease they decrease next question the product of your light reaction in the photosynthesis very easy question in light reaction we have atp nadh and oxygen byproducts and oxygen is the byproduct here easy question next question the primary co2 acceptor in c4 plants is phosphoenol pyruvate and is found in the mesophyll cells yes in your if you look at the C4 pathway, it's divided into two parts. Here is the mesophyll cells. Here is the bundle sheet cells. Bundle sheet cells. In the mesophyll cells, what is happening? CO2 is entering and is taken by phosphoenol pyruvate, getting converted to oxaloacetic acid, which is getting later sent to your bundle sheet in the form of malic acid. Malic acid yes now why is it sent here the reason it is sent here is because mesophyll cells in the c4 plants lack rubisco enzyme so rubisco enzyme is only found where rubisco enzyme is only found in your bundle sheet not in your mesophyll cells not in the mesophyll cells so both statements are correct both statements are correct here clear next question which of the following is not true again is not true regarding the release of energy during the ATP synthesis through the chemiosmotic theory. All of us know in chemiosmotic theory, there is no involvement of electron gradient. No involvement of electron gradient. So answer number three. Three or C is correct. Not true. Not true. Clear? Not true. Next question. Which of the following combination is required for chemiosmosis? Now what are the requirements? If you want to make a proton, if you want to make an ATP, what are the requirements? Membrane, proton pump should be there. Yes. Proton gradient should be there. And ATP synthase structure should be there. ATP synthase structure should be there. Yes. So, option number two. You need a membrane, you need a proton pump, you need a proton gradient, or also, and also you need a ATP synthase. ATP synthase for making the ATP. Next question. How many ATP and NADPH are required for synthesis of one molecule of glucose during Calvin cycle? That is C6H12O6. C6H12O6. Six carbon. Yes. Six carbon. I think six CO2. 
For 6 CO2 fixation, how many ATP is required? For 6 CO2 fixation, if you look at your NCRT right now, there is a, there is a small box which says that 18 ATP and 12 NADH. 18 ATP as well as 12 NADH. Done. Next question. The reaction center PS2 has an absorption maxima. All of you know PS2 may sound 2 as bigger, but it will have absorption maxima is lower. That is 680. 680 is your PS2. 700 from your PS1. Done? Yes, done. So, this chapter is done. Now, we'll be starting off with respiration plants. Two more chapters to go, students. Just two more chapters to go. Keep watching. Keep solving questions. Rest is up to you. Rest is up to you. So, keep on solving the questions, everything. Okay? Next question. Where is the, respira where is the respiratory electron transport system ets electron transport chain system located in the plants what is the location where is it hidden electron transport chain is present in your inner mitochondria present in your inner mitochondrial membrane present in your inner mitochondrial membrane clear 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 wow 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 full uh, what do i say uh, <laughs> You know, using all, uh, full math and all. Next question. Respiratory quotient. Students, respiration plants. We are doing respiration plants now. Last two chapters to go. If you have watched till now, amazing. You have that amazing sense from past three hours you're sitting in front of the screen and solving the questions. This is going to be the most productive evening for you. Productive day, in fact. You have solved 150 questions in the morning. 150 questions in the evening. Do you realize that? 300 PYQs from biology. That is not an easy job. Not an easy job. If you sit on your own and solve such questions, it will take a lot of time. It will take a lot of time. Right? Now, tripalmitin is a type of your lipid. Lipid has your respiratory quotient of 0 0.7. Easy. 0 0.7. Next question. Conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, the first irreversible reaction of glycolysis is controlled by hexokinase. Easy. See, students, this I cannot explain. This is the direct lines of NCRT. There's nothing to explain. All you need to remember this part. Hexokinase. But functioning, I've explained to you. Functioning, I've explained to you. Okay, if you watch my respiration plants in one shot, I've explained the entire glycolysis. Not just made you, buy, not just made you write down this. I've explained how one step, how one and next step is connected. Next question. The number of substrate level phosphorylation in one turn of citric acid cycle. That is, direct production of ATP or GTP. Now tell me, how many GTP are produced in one turn of your, one turn of citric acid cycle? Just one turn of citric acid cycle. How many GTP are produced? One GTP is produced. So, one substrate level phosphorylation. Only one substrate level phosphorylation is happening. Okay, in one, one cycle. In one cycle. Next question. Which of the following statement is incorrect? ADP synthesis through complex 5, correct? Oxidation reduction reaction produces a proton gradient in respiration. Okay, correct. Du <clears throat> During aerobic respiration, the role of oxygen is limited to the terminal stage. Yes, that is final electron acceptor is oxygen. Correct. In electron transport chain, one molecule of NADH, NADPH2 gives <coughs> 2 ATP, no, it gives 3 ATP. FADH gives 3 ATP, no. It gives 2 ATP. So, incorrect option is option number 4 is the incorrect option. Clear? Option number 4 is the incorrect option here. Done. Option number 4, D for Octo. Next question. The 5 carbon compound formed during the TCA cycle. Friends, there is only one fiber carbon compound. So, remember the trick for this. Remember the trick for this. Officer. Can I keep selling sandwiches for money? For money. Oil of oxalacetate. Oil of oxalacetate. Citrate. Isocitrate. Alpha keto glutarate. Succinyl coenzyme A. Succinate. Succinate sandwiches. Fumarate and malate. And the 5 carbon compound. Is going to be alpha keto glutarate. Alpha keto 
Glutarate is the five carbon compound. Next question. Oh, answer is given here. Answer is given here, students. The number of decarboxylation in isocitrate also of isocitrate occurs to increase in single DC cycle is two times. Two times. Next question. Identify the cytochrome which acts as the mobile carrier for transport of electrons between the complex 3 and complex 4. For the transportation of your um, electrons from complex 3 to complex 4, which is the mobile carrier? The mobile carrier is going to be your cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is the mobile carrier. Easy question, students. These are direct questions. You should be able to answer them very easily. There is no thinking required here. Okay, there's no thinking required. Right? Next question. Fatty acids are converted with the respiratory, connected to the respiratory pathway through. See, if you look at your chart, if you look at the chart for amphiboic pathway, and it clearly shows you that, it clearly shows you that the fatty acids can enter the other, other different systems, other respiratory pathway with the help of acetyl coenzyme A. With the help of, they'll get converted to acetyl coenzyme A and they can enter. Now, what about, what about your, um, let's say, proteins? How does the proteins enter? Tell me in the chat, anyone, can anyone tell me in the chat or in the comments later on, how does the proteins enter the respiratory pathway? Okay. Next question. ATP is used at the two steps in the glycolysis. Yes. In the preparatory stage, at two stages, it has been used. Next question. The first step is used in converting glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. True. The second step is conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. If you notice clearly, one additional phosphate is added and it is true that the two places ATP is being used. So A is true. And R is the correct explanation of A. So ATP is being consumed in those two places. Okay. Next question. In order to increase the yield, oh students, now done. You are respiration implants done. Now we will be starting with the last chapter. Now we'll be starting with the last chapter of your class 11th botany. Last chapter. Last chapter of your club, last chapter of your class 11th. Can we start? Can we start the last chapter of your class 11th? That is your which chapter? Plant growth and regulators. Now, students, from this chapter, easy marks for you. Very easy marks you can get. The only way to get easy marks from this last chapter is to know the plant growth regulators. Apart from plant growth regulators, you can get a question on your growth. Exponential growth and logistic growth. Yes. On the growth, or you can get a question on plasticity. You can get a question from plasticity. That's it. That's it. You will not get questions anymore else. So if you know such questions, if you know the function of each and every plant growth regulator, marks are yours. You don't have to worry even a single thing. Nothing you need to worry. Everything is in your hand. Okay. Let's start. Last chapter. Students, we have been solving more than 150 questions. You realize more than 150 questions from your botany class 11th. If this video gets more than 500 likes, then only we'll be doing part two. So go on, like the video right now, share the video. I want every single student who are watching right now, share the video as soon as possible. Share it right now so that more students can, you know, get benefit from these lectures. So we can do a part two of this. In part two lecture, we'll be doing all of your botany class 12 chapters okay class 12 chapter class 12 chapters of your botany okay so like the video right now and share the video first question in order to increase the yield of sugarcane crops which of the following plant growth regulators should be spread which plant growth regulator should be spread if you want to increase the sugarcane answer is very simple that is your jipper lens Gibberlins are added. Gibberlins are added to increase the plant growth. Done. Next question, students. Removal of shoot tips is a very useful technique to boost the production of tea leaves. This is because. 
you know tea leaves what is present tell me in the chat tea leaves top have uh, apical apical tip right so if you take out the apical if your oxygen is removed gro growth will happen no if you look at the tea gardens in your um, um darjeeling assam if you look at the tea gardens have you seen they start they keep on pruning it yes to make sure it doesn't grow very tall to make sure the lateral growth is there why if you took to cut the growing shoot tip arrow and shoot tip effect of oxygen is removed yes if effect of oxygen is removed the growth of lateral buds is enhanced yes so that's what happens in the tea leaves c4 chapter next question next question it takes very long time for pineapple plant to produce flowers obviously which combination of hormones can can be applied to artificially induce flowering in pineapple plant throughout the year to increase the yield so we know pineapple takes a lot of time to flower but if you add these two hormones these two hormones the plant the pineapple will flower faster and give you the fruit that is your oxygen and ethylene answer is oxygen and ethylene is the answer true obviously more oxygen more flowering is produced right next question the plant follows a different pathway okay again important question all of you have a fixed pathway imagine you take you deviate from your pathway and you want to take a different pathway that is called as plasticity the plant follows different pathway in response to response to environmental response to environmental or phases of life to form different kinds of structures this ability is called as your plasticity example is your buttercup environmental yes next question plant hormone used to destroy weeds weed side a commercial commercially available weed side is 240 all of you know it is 240 now tell me in the chat 240 is it a oxygen is it a gibberellin is it a is it a cytokinins is it a abscisic acid which one is it you should tell me in the chat now what is 240 is it a oxygen or gibberellin or anything next question the phenomena by which undividing parenchyma cells we have some certain amount of parenchyma cells which are not dividing at all undividing parenchyma cells start to divide mitotically during the plant tissue culture is called as undivided start dividing that is called as d differentiation that is called as what d differentiation clear now once they stop their function again and they change their function that would be redifferentiation next question which of the following growth regulators is an adenine derivative adenine derivative students you should know every single every single growth regulator and its derivative is very important so adenine derivative all of you know it is your cytokinins cytokinins are your adenine derivatives next question which hormone is used to induce immediate stomatal closure in leaves now imagine a plant is nicely surviving okay like all of you suddenly there is stress so much of stress is there to plant the plant will be like no 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 water loss is happening a lot i need to close my stomata that is also called as your stress hormone that is your abscisic acid abscisic acid is present during the stress it is also called a stress hormone and uh, which helps in closing of the stomata next one the gaseous plant growth regulator is used to plant in use is used in plants too uh, here students you should know here the root hair promotion of root hair is only and only with the help of gaseous hormone which is ethylene ethylene promotes root hair formation to increase the absorption of surface clear next question the phenomena by which phenomena which is influenced by oxen and also played a major role in discovery of easy all of us know the oxen was discovered by canary grass experiment that is your which one that is photoperiodism that is photoperiodism that is bending of light bending of plant towards the light 
that is the position of oxygen in the opposite direction of the light next question the spring of which of the following phytohormones on juvenile conifers direct line of your ncrt direct line of your ncrt if you add gibberlins answer it told answer it told you <laughs> by mistake told you answer if you add gibberlins on your you know juvenile conifers it hastening the maturity period leads to the early seed production early seed production that is your gibberlins by mistake told the answer gibberlins it's your need 2023 question students need 2023 questions okay next question which hormone promotes internode or petiole elongation in deep water rice see we know internode elongation is happening internode elongation is happening generally with your gibberlins but in your deep water rice that is going to be your ethylene that is going to be your ethylene deep water rice is going to be ethylene not gibberlin not gibberlin okay not gibberlin friends that is the end that is the end of the lecture that is the end of the entire class 11th botany okay now friends you solve a lot of pyqs you solve a lot of pyqs if you want to solve more pyqs and sir you do not want to learn from pdf you do not want to learn from pdf you want to learn from book we have a solution for you we have a solution for you that is neat 2024 from neat 2004 to 2023 see today we did today we did from 2019 2019 to 2023 we did but if you want to solve more pyqs if you want to solve more pyqs from 2004 to 2023 no question skipped you can buy the books from amazon See students, we can give you PDF copy. We can give you PDF copy, not this books. Other things we have. But if you want a hard copy, you wanna you know go sit there and tick one by one. If you wanna tick one by one and solve it like that, for that you need to buy this book. For that you need to buy this book. Okay, that is it is av available on Amazon. Link is in the description. So go on cash on delivery. If you want to solve books, if you want to solve questions from your books directly, then only you buy this book. Okay. How was session? Tell me, students. Tell me in the chat. How was today's session? First of all, students, it's very difficult to make such amazing PPT with NCERT lines from every single chapter. Did you notice? We went chapter wise. Chapter wise from 2019 2023, all the questions were done in today's class. Students, let me know without fail. Let me know in the comment section how was today's class. Okay. So with that being said, class entire class 11th botany is done and dusted. Entire class learn botany is done and dusted, students. With that, okay. So, students, go to the comment section after today's video. After today's video, go to the comment section and show me what. Because see, students, actually, after every class, I sit there and read the comments. When I read the comments, I know some students have benefited from me. Students are able to understand what I'm teaching. Yes, that's when I truly understand. That's when I truly understand. You are understanding my class. Okay, you're under understanding my class. So if you want, let me in the comment section. Done and dusted entire class 11th botany. Let me know in the comment section about today's class. And thank you, students. And we will, if this video gets good amount of likes, we will do a part two where we'll be doing your class 12th botany one shot. Okay, class 12th botany all PYQs. Class 12th botany all PYQs will be doing. Okay, so with that being said, thank you so much, students. Take care, all of you, and good night.